All right. Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, Friday, May the 29th, 2020. Uh, we're into our, um, I'm not sure what number this is, maybe eight or something, nine maybe, budget meeting, Jane, I'm not sure. You might be uh, marking them off on your calendar, Jane, more than uh, the rest of us. Thank you. Good to see you, uh, our CFO this morning, Jane. Thank you. Um, so we're in a budget meeting. We're continuing with where we left off yesterday. So first of all, I'm just going to make sure that we have everybody and we can see the beautiful faces of the Halifax Regional Council for those who are tuning in. Uh, Councillor Stretch, I see you there. Uh, I am. I wouldn't say a beautiful face, but uh, glad to be here <laughs> and uh, real happy. It's Friday, Your Worship, and uh, very pleased with how this has progressed and looking forward to a productive uh, day here today. Uh, representing Waverly Fall River, Muscadabit Valley, District 1. Thank you. Awesome. As my wife might say of me, the face may not be beautiful, but there's so much of it. <laughs> Councillor Hensby, I know, is in uh, Grand Desert. Councillor Hensby is going to be dialing in. He's on the Grand Desert uh, Beach. Uh, Councillor Nicol. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. My uh calendar this morning reminded me of an event I always look forward to the mayor's bike ride and for one and for the first time was coming to Cole Harbor so and I know you look forward to it as well so it's sad that we're not able to do that this year so I'm um, not sure when or if ever but um, look forward to if we do welcome you actually physically to Cole Harbor. Awesome we've actually moved it to my basement I'll be doing it tonight if anybody wants to come by. Councillor Austin from downtown Dartmouth. I'm here, Mr. Mayor. How are your kids today? They're good. They're good. They're occupied downstairs temporarily, so uh, we'll see if they uh, arrive in this meeting or not. <laughs> awesome. Councillor Mancini from the Greenhouses at Beasley Field. Mr. Mayor and colleagues, good morning, everyone. Uh, the greenhouse uh, behind me, I had a chance to visit that this morning, and uh, all the plants uh, for the HRM uh, plant uh, in Dartmouth come from this greenhouse. And I, Mr. Mayor, I met Christine Carroll. She's been working for us for 30 years and she's retiring in October. She started in the great town of Bedford and then with amalgamation carried over. And she's been working ever since in that greenhouse. And uh, it was amazing to meet her. She does her work every day with a big smile. So thank you, Christine Carroll, for 30 years of service to the municipality. That is awesome. We should get her a plant or something, Tony. <laughs> Good idea, Mr. Mayor. I'll put that on my list. <laughs> Councillor Mason, are you with us? I'm here, Mr. Mayor. Can you hear me? We got you. Yeah, that was very quick. Uh, well, I'm uh, on my Mac instead of on my work computer, and I'm actually right above you. I'm in my office at City Hall, and when Corey's done getting David uh, online, uh, he's going to uh, get my uh, work computer working. So just in time to be done budget, I'll have teams working. OK, well, we see you there. We see you. That looks like a grade two graduation certificate behind. It says almost <laughs> it back finished grade two. Creighton Park, great school. The one to his right, Mr. Mayor, is from Mexico University. <laughs> the best three years, years of his life. <laughs> school of Urban Planning of uh, Tequila. That's the best three years of his life, that great too. Oh, oh my. Uh, here we go. Hi, I'm here. Beautiful District 8, sunny day. Lots of fun happening in, in the background. You want to tell us what's behind you? This is a mural uh, in the north end. It, it, you can't really see. I'm using my mouse, and none of you can see that. Obviously, it's this north end. It has Roby Street, a Griffith Street. Um, you know, really, really thought it was a, a good little mural to put in the background. Also, because I have a little critter running around the background and doing homework, so I thought <laughs> rather than see a random person pop up here and there, why not put a, a nice colorful background? It's awesome. It puts me in mind of uh, Jeremy uh, and uh, Mulgrave Park uh, murals and things like that. Awesome. Right. 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 Councillor Cleary. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Um, and actually, my background is Quinpool Road circa 1960. Um, I just want to uh, say hi to everyone, but also uh, our staff have been amazing. Uh, people might have heard of the slow streets that are coming to their community uh, in Dartmouth and Halifax. Uh, I've got quite a few actually just right around my house. Um, but I just noticed that the dream team, as we called them a few days ago, have put on social media, and I went to Shape Your City, it's not there yet, but the link uh, would be from Shape Your City. They're asking people to help, uh, help them identify spaces where action is needed for uh, you to move safely. They can drop a pin on the map 
uh, to show them. You, their input will help the Dream Team determine the next steps for making more temporary changes to our streets with COVID-19. You can go to shapeyourcityhalifax.ca slash mobility response slash map slash Halifax mobility response streets. That's a lot. But if you go to social media, Facebook, Twitter, you can find Halifax uh, government uh, and uh, people can have input on where they'd like to see some slow streets. That's pretty cool, eh? That is very cool. They're doing some good. Is that the Oxford Theatre behind you? Uh, it is. So the Oxford Theatre is where my first wife and I had our first date, and I think it might have been 1960. Uh, so you, you might be in this picture. There. My first and current wife, I should say, just for anybody who's uh, uh, watching. Uh, and I'm for people who, uh, who probably have heard, June 5th, uh, restaurants and cafes and bars will be reopening. It's a little bit different than we would normally uh, use them. But the Oxford Tap Room, uh, so Brian, who owns Garrison and owns the Tap Room, he's planning, he's got a back uh, patio, he's putting front patios, they're going to do a little patio down the land strip between them and the pizza place. Uh, so lots of chance for outdoor uh, uh, refreshment uh, coming to you June 5th. Thank you. Councilor Walker. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Uh, everything's fine out here in District 10 and uh, urge you to get on with it. One o'clock's haven't come fast. If not, we're going to be here tomorrow. No, 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 no. We're going to keep going today. I've asked the staff to keep us on the books until seven o'clock tomorrow morning. We're getting this done today. Councillor Adams. Fine with me. Good morning, uh, your worship and members of council. I'm uh, down the hall from Council Mason and upstairs from you in my office. It's uh, a tad warm here. I think the grapes in my fruit looms just turned to raisins. So I had to put a couple, uh, had to put a couple uh, windows open. Anyway, uh, in keeping with um, our buy local and our takeout, I, after this meeting, I'm going to Spinnaker's at the Armdale Yacht Club for some chowder and fish and chips. So let's let's get this meeting moving on and uh, we don't enjoy some good food. Thank you. Okay, cool. Great. Hope you enjoy your supper there. Uh, Councillor Zarowski. Councillor Zarowski. Come back. Councillor, Councillor Whitman. Uh, good morning, uh, Mayor Savage. Good morning, colleagues and uh, residents. I appreciate all the uh, the chatter this morning. I must have missed the pre-meeting Caesars and mimosas, but it's good to see everyone in uh, in good spirits this morning. morning. Happy Friday. Indeed. Awesome. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Laura, she's there. You go. Sorry. Good morning, everybody. Uh, artwork behind me here is uh, entitled Kitchen Mess Circa 2020. And uh, for those who, uh, who reached out to me on Twitter, yes, that is an old meat grinder and an old flour sifter from uh, the 19th. Beautiful. Thank you. Councillor Russell is joining us, I think, from the road. Councillor Russell, are you with us? I am with you. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mayor and uh, colleagues. I'm happy to be here on this Friday, hopefully for the last day of budget deliberations. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you mentioned introducing your wife as your first wife. My father did that. In fact, for uh, 45 years of marriage until he passed away, he would always introduce my mother as his first wife. It was rather touching. So I appreciate that and uh, wishing everybody a good Friday and Looking forward to some vigorous discussion. It's awesome. It's not how my wife describes it when I use it, but that's okay. Councillor Outset. I am here and ready to go. And if I referred to my wife as my first wife, I'd probably be looking for my second wife. But uh, you guys get away with a lot more than I do. But uh... No. The one thing I know for certain, though, above all else, is that my wife is not watching council. So uh, I can get away with it this morning. Um, okay, colleagues. So... Jacques is with us, Jane is with us. Thank you all very much for the continued uh, work that you've been doing. We're gonna pick up our list from where we were yesterday. Jane, that's what we're gonna do. Correct, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we're starting with item hotel levy revenue transfer, Discover Halifax for $1.36 million. And I'm gonna go to the deputy mayor. She's on the board with me of Discover uh, Halifax. Uh, yes. Deputy mayor, how do you wanna handle this? 
Well, uh, looking to put $300,000 of this uh, $1.3 million back into uh, the budget. Uh, as we heard uh, Ross Jefferson, uh, who presented to us earlier this week, they are still very, very active, and their chief uh, means of financial support, the hotel levy, has been basically ripped out from underneath them since nobody really is staying in hotels right now. So this $300,000 would certainly put them on good footing for the rest of the year. It sort of puts them on a path to market Halifax HRM uh, to the Maritimes in preparation for what uh, will probably be known as the Maritime bubble. So uh, I would like to put $300,000 back into uh, the budget to, uh, in order to help them achieve that goal for this year and at least try to uh, recover what they can from the uh, the season. Thank you. Mancini seconds that. Tim and I Thank second. You. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. If I could just say a word, it looks like people may be okay. This is, um, as, as the Deputy Mayor said, that they presented on Tuesday. The work that Ross Jefferson and his team are doing is extraordinary. And uh, we really need to support our small businesses. And the plan that Discover Halifax has and the staycation idea uh, is going to be is going to be really important. So they need some money, and uh, I certainly support that. So I don't see anybody else that wants to speak to it. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Can what's, we go to the what's the motion? What's the motion on the floor, sir? Hello, Councilor Hensby. Sorry. Yes, I'm just down here in Grand Desert Beach, uh, just tuning in right now. So what's the motion on the floor? The motion on the floor is to put three hundred thousand dollars back into Discover Halifax that was cut one point three six million. And the motion was okay. by Deputy Mayor was to put three hundred thousand dollars back for Discover Halifax. I support that. Thank you. Mainly to market the Grand Desert Beach. <laughs> Beautiful spot down here. <laughs> uh, Cheryl, let's do the vote. For the motion. Affirmative. Councillor Kirsten. Not present today. Councilor Nichol. Yes. Councilor Austin. Yes. Councilor Mancini. For the motion. Councilor Mason. For the motion. Councilor Smith. For the motion, we're using Mike's uh, mic. To hear you right now, Cheryl. Oh, you on mute, Cheryl? Okay, well, I am on mute. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Cleary. Uh, yes. yes. Councillor Walker. For. Councillor Adams. For. Councillor Zorowski. He is here. Uh, Councillor Zorowski is not currently in the meeting. Thank you. Councillor Whitman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Blackburn? Voting yes on the motion. Councillor Russell? For the motion. Councillor Outhead? Voting yes. And Mayor Savage? Voting yes. Motion carries and... Uh, um, I, don't know if, I think Denise was on the call, but I think we're good. Thank you very much to uh, the staff for their work on this as well. Uh, I know Councillor Russell wants to speak to the next item, which is events and grants at uh, 640,000. I'm not sure uh, if somebody wanted to move it and um, or Councillor Russell wanted to move. Yeah, I can uh, move restoring 250,000 of, of that, um, of the uh, events and grants funding. And what we're looking at is different from what we've seen in the past. So there was a significant cut to uh, the events and the grants this year, especially the regional special events grants. And the, the rationale for that cut made sense in that um, we are going to be having far fewer events. But looking at it from the other side, even though we have far fewer events, and I mentioned this, I think, last week, we don't know what those events are. Um, so the individual events that... Uh, our community groups are going to be holding are going to be completely different from what we've seen in the past. We aren't going to have um, 
a parade or, or any of the community get-togethers or any of the other things that would normally cost a known amount of money. Instead, we're going to have a completely refactored event. And unfortunately, we don't know the, the funding for that, but it will still boost the community spirit um, at this time when we have these incredible restrictions. And so I'm simply looking for, uh, for support to restore some of the funding for that so that we can provide these events for the community spirit. Thank you. Was there a second for that motion? I'll Councilor that. Cleary, second. Councilor Cleary, second. Um, okay. Anybody? Um, anybody else to speak on that? Uh, Councilor Ross. No. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I, I just want to clarify. Um, and uh, perhaps I've forgotten it from the Parks and Rec presentation. What exactly is this bundled line um, in in its entirety? Is this all events grants um, all in in this bundle, or is it um, other other grants as well? Mr. Mayor Denise Schofield, Director of Parks and Recreation. So that bundled line is essentially three components, Councillor. It is a reduction of a hundred thousand dollars for the regional special events, as, as Council Russell mentioned. That line that is normally two hundred and fifteen thousand. The reduction would be put to put that down to one hundred and fifteen thousand. So a reduction of a hundred thousand. It is a reduction of the additional, essentially the additional hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars that Council had proposed to put into the professional arts grant program through your earlier version of the BAL process, the budget adjustment list process that we were doing back in March. It's also the remainder is about 415,000, which is a reduction of civic events. So the Canada Day, Natal Day type events that HRM staff put on. What we had said in uh, when I had done my presentation, we're not anticipating events in the normal way. Um, we do, we have retained some money for events for the fall, the winter, so, so around the Christmas season, with the hope that we can get back to normal then. But um, the bulk of the money that we would normally spend in the for the summer events, all of the parades, that kind of thing, that's that four hundred and fifteen thousand. So it's those three components. So uh, would count. What what would be the impact of uh, Councillor Russell's motion then to put two fifty back? Um, would that be actually increasing the? Funding for special events because I, I, if I heard you correct, we it's an actually 115,000 that was taken out of events that's part it, of this bundle. It's 100 hundred thousand that was taken out of events. So I guess I would ask for clarification as to what the intent behind for Councillor Russell's motion. If it was to put 250,000 back exclusively for regional special events, it would be an increase. If it's to put 250 back for um, some HRM events and regional events, then it it would uh, it would not be an increase for event grants. So it depends on what what he is hoping to do with that two hundred fifty thousand, or what is okay. Intended. Uh, well, I'll just say for myself. I mean, uh, I don't mind putting some back um, for events. Um, I I do hope we restore the uh, the arts piece, um, which we've heard loud and uh, loud and clear about from uh, a lot of people over the last couple of days. Um, thank so you. I, sorry, just to clarify on the arts piece, I just want to make sure it's clear. The 125,000 was an increase that council was putting forth last year. So, if if you um, proceed with this cut, the amount of funding that's available for uh, the, through the professional arts grant program would re remain the same as what it was last year. The 125 was an increase. Oh, okay. So there is no actual cut there. There's no it's just, actual. Uh, our our increase that we were planning is not, not part correct. Of it. However, okay. what I I would also to clarify, as I said in my presentation, what we're we're going to look to do is focus really on operational funding. So that professional arts grant program has two streams: projects and operational funding. Most of the projects tend to be things that bring people together for gatherings, which of course is going to be very challenging in the next little bit. So what what uh, we were looking to do or intending to do is really put up the focus on operational funding because we believe that's the funding that the arts groups really are going to need for the next 
you know, little bit that that's really where our focus should be. So the the focus of the application um, and, and then where the money is, is distributed is going to be largely on operational, but the amount, the total amount that's available was not intended to be cut. It was just the extra. Okay. Uh, where is, um, if, if council were to give, put some money back into this area, um, to events grants um, because this thing's this this line seems to have three items to it. Um, where would you see it actually producing the most impact? Like where is it that you could actually take money and do something with it? So as I said, we we left some money in there for some events. Um, you know, certainly the the event grant program for communities. We you know. We're we're looking at the crystal ball like everyone else. So what communities are able to do for the ne for the next few months for events is it's going to be very different. We've reached out to all of the events to see if they are adjusting what their program is, but that's probably the area that that would have the most impact for the the community as a whole because it will provide some money back to to those community groups to do events in their communities. Okay, uh, I'll I'll see what my colleagues have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Nichol. I'm I'm kind of like Denise, obviously. I need clarification as to exactly what the 250K is for. If it's to accommodate the drive-in uh, movies for an event where they're, you know, they're going to take care of physical distancing, that, that's one thing. And how much is that needed? Because like you, you mentioned that there is the um the arts funding and that and that's for you know not for profits to keep going. So I don't know if the 250 was decided upon to be like events where gathering in a vehicle is, is is one thing, but then the gatherings as they as they go for the rest of the budget year, I don't think are going to actually happen because of the restrictions being put. I mean, we saw what happened in New Brunswick yesterday, so it's not like it's um people are going to be open to these, you know, opening up the large gatherings again for events. So I. I guess to Denise, when you calculated this amount, um, it was for all of what you mentioned, or and is two. I just wondered, like, and Councillor Russell uh, can say that what what the actual two hundred fifty thousand is for, if it's just for events in the community. So, Mr. Uh, Resident, if I so, may, go ahead. If Council. I may jump in here, thank you. Uh, the $100,000 uh, restoration was certainly for the regional events grant. This would be for uh, the drive-in movie theaters, and the remaining 150000 was to cover any other events or any other um, adjusted type of formatting that we might be able to allow or that we might uh, see the province allow uh, over the next few months, where this is going to be stretching out through the rest of the budget year. So it was certainly to cover the regional special events grants for 100,000. And then the other 150,000 was to allow for flexibility with the other types of events that we might have. Councilor Nickel. I, and um, so I, I'm just thinking about it. I'll wait to, for the rest of the debate. Thank you, Councilor uh, Stretch. Yeah, I guess I'm uh, very similar to uh, my colleagues and the comments that are coming forward. Uh, a lot of these events just aren't going to happen. I mean, I was notified a couple of weeks ago that uh, for the first time in 140 years, the Halifax County Exhibition won't be happening because that's what they uh, felt was the right thing to do. And that was a an annual grant. So uh, uh, if in fact now we're putting some money back in that will enable uh, uh, a, a different type of event, whether it's like a drive-in thing or, or something else, is this uh, funding going to be available across the municipality or or is it uh, specific uh, more so to uh, one area or the other? Uh, I, I don't want to uh, think I'm voting on something that may enable uh, the group, for example, at the uh, exhibition grounds to uh, uh, to try and recast or re redo something a little different uh, when in fact it really isn't. So I'm looking for clarity as well. And I, I have no problem if, uh, if this is all encompassing, but uh, I'm just not sure at this point. So Mr. Mayor, through you to the councillor, this is, Count, uh, staff would be um, taking using this funding, bringing forward a report to council. We bring this report to council annually, usually around now. It's a bit delayed because we're working with the various groups to see what their 
how they're changing their event format. But we would be bringing this forward, um, distributing this money based on council's direction, and it would be across the municipality, whichever. And th these are, there's um, the, the process, there's an administrative order for the regional special events that outlines yeah. what groups have to meet. So it would be that process. It would just be different types of events from okay. previous years. Well, well, Denise, uh, through your worship, that does bring clarity. So uh, we aren't deciding here today what event may or may not qualify or what will go ahead. This will come back to council. This just enables you to have a small pocket of money to uh, even entertain those applications to bring back to us. Correct. We we have a small pot of money. This would this would put the full amount back so that we could then, um, per, you know, consider more events, that kind of thing. And, but it definitely, this is just to put the money in the in the budget. We would be back to council with the for the decisions. And we would have the opportunity, if this decision is made, to uh, notify those community groups that uh, maybe there would be opportunities and that they should uh, continue to plan, albeit in a different way uh, this season. Correct. Okay. Our, our staff are reaching out to all of those groups to, to really see which ones are canceling, which ones are looking to, to revamp their programming now. So that work is ongoing. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Othan. Actually, uh, Steve's quite uh, answers to Steve's questions from Denise uh, addressed all my issues, so I'll I'll back out. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cleary. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just uh, Denise, I, I don't know if I caught it or not. Uh, you had said you had already held back some funding. So how much funding do you currently have for the events and grants? So the we had retained um, 115,000 of the regional special events grants funding. We had retained the 400, sorry, counselor, my notes, I, th I think it's around 430 for the professional arts grants. I'll find my piece of paper here in a second. Um, and we had retained about four, around 400,000 and change for civic events. Okay, so it's really in the regional events where you're low and then just generally other stuff that we would normally be looking at in any given year. So I'm, I'm looking at the 640 that we have and the 250 to go back in. And I'm I'm still wondering if um, if 250 is 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 too much given what you already have, but I'm I'm comfortable we're still we're still cutting and adding just a little bit more back. But um, I'll I'll wait to see if others have anything to say about the amount. But I'm more than happy to leave it up to your discretion. And of course, uh, whatever report you bring back with recommendations, we generally tend to uh, support staff's recommendations on these kind of events. Um, so give me a sense of, of scale and I know you've got your crystal ball there in front of you. Do you think adding back 250 is necessary at this point and what could you do with 250 given the kind of situation we're in and the kind of events? I would assume a lot of groups may either A, not need as much as they used to because the events will be smaller, or B, might need more, maybe twice or three times as much more because the expenses are going to be way above what they normally would be on a per attendee basis kind of thing. Sure. So what I would say, so in terms of, of the event grant, you, you've hit the nail exactly on the head, Councillor. What we're hearing is about half of the, the events who normally are hosted are, are just canceling outright. But then the ones who are, are looking to do something different, they may need a bit more money because of the of the changes. And most of them are looking for at virtual events as opposed to in-person events, because of course the restrictions are still on, you know, five people, that kind of thing. So that particular funding, and that's what we would, we bring that report back to council. The, the if, if council deemed to put that money, that $100,000 back, that would give flexibility to uh, for those events that maybe needed more. Um, I guess I guess what I would say is we would then bring the report back to you for council's deliberation. You don't have to allocate all of that 215,000, right? So if if for some reason we don't have either enough events applying or the request the amount of money that's needed isn't sufficient or isn't enough or that much, then we wouldn't recommend that you allocate it all. In terms of the additional 150 that is also included in this that would not 
necessarily come back to council. If I understand Council Russell's um, uh, description, that is to give flexibility for what I'm going to call those civic events. So those are the things like, like I say, Canada Day, Natal Day, tree lightings, those kind of things. It, we're working with some of our funding partners right now to look at virt a virtual Canada Day um, event. Wouldn't be bringing people together. We're, we're, you know, we're working on that hard. We're, we're close to being able to announce what we think we're going to be able to achieve there. But uh, and that so, this Denise, sorry, you you would need then some of this increased funding back to do that virtual Canada Day event. Um, or, we, or you would be restricted in what you already have. We we would we would be just using what we have. So that additional funding back would would give a bit more flexibility. You know, I'm I'm not going to sit here and say that I need it all, Councillor, because this is about cutting the budget. Certainly, we could we can work with what we have. Anything else that council puts back in is is a bonus, but it's not. I can't sit here and honestly tell you it's required. It would be a bonus for any potential future events. Yeah, as as grants generally are. I appreciate that, Denise. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Smith's having trouble with it. There he is. Cool. So, uh, so most of, most of my questions were answered in hi Denise happy surprise announcement day yes um, so we're getting uh, <laughs> ready we'll see what happens today. yeah yeah we'll see what happens today so just for clarification I have one one question but clarification so what you said before it was a, it was around a hundred thousand for regional events correct 400 something uh, for, for uh, HRM events, events. Oh, 435 sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. for HRM events 125 for professional arts programs uh, mm -hmm. And that was added to the budget from our, our budget um, discussions previously. Correct. And there were no proposed cuts to our current art grants that we we have on the books now. So the professional art grant program is those are applications every year so those are going through the process now i believe you might be talking about some of those what we call one-off grants so right things like operations the bus yeah correct yeah no there is no proposed cuts to any of those so then in in also the operational grants though there was no proposed cuts there either the operational grants through the professional arts. Arts. so those are applied for every year that application process is open right now or right. It, just close we're, we're reviewing those applications so that there is no cut to what the amount of money that had been previously allocated the 435,000 it was right. just the additional top, top up if you want to call it the additional increase the council had proposed in this year's um, mm -hmm. first version of the budget right so I'm not sure if you're aware or not but we received a lot of emails over the past couple of days from folks in the arts and I, and, and I was trying to see, and we I'm going to blame Wayne Mason, um, but I was trying to find out where the information came that we were cutting these programs. And, you know, I, I knew that this was part of it, the 125 professional arts, which was added to the budget to mm -hmm. try to get us to the to the to the standard of around other other cities. Um, but other than that, are you are you aware of, of, of what might have what information might have been shared that kind of caused the influx of, of emails from the arts folks saying that we're cutting art funding? Uh, I, I think it you know we, we do have this line item as funding being cut so I think it's I think it's a communication um, challenge and uh, uh, confusion as opposed to it, it is a cut council was intending to increase the amount but it's not a cut to the it's not a cut below what the level was last year. Okay, good. And that and that that's the that's the point I wanted you to make. So it's not a cut to the level of last year. All right, I'm great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councillor Mason. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so uh, I will take that blame uh, because I did have some conversations very briefly with some people, and I did say, well, that cut is the, is being proposed, as as Denise said. Uh, I guess my concern is, you know, so I ran events for 20 years, and I I know. Uh, uh, how difficult it must be for all organizations in the community, uh, arts uh, organizations, event-based organizations, and other community organizations that 
uh, in these difficult times, they're not going to be seeing any door revenue. They're not going to be able to sell tickets or have people come through the door. They're not going to be able to uh, get the kind of sponsorship that they would normally be able to get from private sector uh, because they can't deliver a product that is sponsorable. Uh, and so, so uh, you know, I can go one way or another based on what we heard. I almost feel like a, a, a motion of counsel uh, asking staff to go away and talk to these folks and find out what their real carrying costs are. Because I know even a small event like the one I ran, the, the Halifax Pop Explosion, uh, the, the uh, Jazz Festival uh, uh, has contacted me and a bunch of other uh, of the larger signature events, let alone the ones that have a big physical plant like Neptune uh, uh, Theatre, uh, that they continue to have, well, you know, you know, they have heating, they have insurance, they have some staff costs, they have overhead, they ha there are, uh, uh, in some cases, they're paying rent. And so they're trying to keep the lights on, literally, until they're able to deliver their product again. And I think that the community would be weaker for it if these organizations failed. So, uh, you know, I don't know that it's appropriate to fund them as if the events are happening. Uh, I, but I think that it is appropriate to have a discussion with them as trusted community partners who we've worked with for decades and make sure that we continue to be able to offer uh, some support as one of the few things, one of the few organizations they can turn to that would pay them. And then there is the secondary issue that was discussed of uh, what kind of events are going to happen and how much will they cost and will we be able to be there. So maybe we need to ask staff to go and talk to uh, people in the community and, and have a robust discussion about, you know, what will it take? Because, it, yeah, it certainly doesn't make sense to say, here's the same money you got last year, even though you're not doing an event. But it also, in my mind, doesn't make sense to give them no money, no money because that will put them all over. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, Mr. Thanks. Mayor, if I could just add that that's exactly what staff are doing right now. Councillor is trying to get a sense as to whether they're hosting events, if they are hosting events, what what type of event, what is it going to cost? What if they're not hosting events this year? Um, what does that mean for them? As well as doing as soon as the budgets pass, we'll be doing the um, the reviews of all of the professional arts grants applications as well and having that interaction there. So. Um, that's some of the, the work that we're doing now. That's one of the reasons why those reports aren't back to council yet, because we want to ensure we get the right information from the groups. So I'm not sure then, Mr. Mayor, how to proceed, because if that work's ongoing right now, we don't really know what the funding envelope that may or may not be required is. But I also feel like if we close the door right now, it's pretty hard to come back. And, you know, maybe the CEO could speak to that. Maybe the preferred option is to go ahead, bring a report to council and as conditions change again, that we could be talking about something else. Jacques, any thoughts on that? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> well, certainly, uh, I think things will change as we go forward. So you know, any requests that we get, uh, you know, if the, if the motion doesn't pass, uh, we will continue to monitor this, work with group community groups, come back to council with recommendations uh, as as the as opportunities arise, um, you know I know that I'm very confident Denise and her team they are reaching out to all these these partners and um, you know we can adjust accordingly and we'll have you know council will have options uh, there'll be money and contingencies uh, and uh, other another source of funding perhaps to to address some of these issues going forward. It's, it's a very similar situation with Destination Halifax. You know we're fully supportive of the move or the decision council made this morning. You know, there may be a requirement going forward to look at that again, uh, and we will bring that forward. So this is the same kind of situation, I think. So certainly, I think Councillor Mason's idea is, is, uh, is merit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mason, Councillor Mason. Uh, Councillor Sam, or Councillor Austin. I think Councillor Adams uh, wants to speak, and I don't think he spoke yet. I don't. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's very kind of you. Councillor Adams. That is very kind indeed. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sam. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, as with all budget documents, this is not set in stone. If uh, we need to make some adjustments down the road, it's not a problem. We can, like the CAO said, we could use contingencies. Uh, we could revisit this. So if uh, any of these items get uh, voted uh, down or they get approved, they can always be adjusted. So uh, I think we should just re remember that. Because of the virus doesn't mean that our, our processes uh, at the end of it all uh, change. Just how we get there um, uh, is uh, you know, it will still be uh, fluid. Thank you.
Thank you. Councillor Austin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so just uh, one last time for Denise. Um, so the civic events, you have 150. It's reduced. It was reduced by 115. Arts, um, you have 430. And the planned increase of 125 isn't in there. And for civic events, you have 400, uh, but it's been cut in half in 415 because obviously events like Canada Day and Natal Day look very different this year. I'm just going to clarify that slightly, Councillor. So for regional special events, so that's the small community events, normally the budget is 215. Uh, under the staff proposal, it was cut down to 115. You're absolutely right. The, the 435 that was allocated to professional arts grants last year is the amount that is put, bring, brought forward for this year. So the 125 increase is cut. And we normally spend around 800 and change, 870 on civic events all of them all year round that has been cut down to about 450. Okay so in terms of like the response in the community I mean I mean I'm kind of inclined actually I kind of like where Councillor Mason's head is on this um, and Councillor Adams um, you know we don't know what's going to be going ahead what funding might look like um, what organizations are cancel are canceling entirely and have no um, expenses other than the burden of carrying costs this year. Um, I'm kind of inclined that we we sh we shouldn't add anything here, and this should nor be an ongoing thing that um, comes back to us either through audit and finance or through other means, uh, rather than us adding money back at this time. Um, in, yeah, that, that, that's kind of where I'm landing on this. If there's anything that I would like to put back in, it's not so much the events, because I think there's a lot of unknown there. It's it's the 125 arts piece, um, since we're planning to increase that um, this year. Um, if we did provide money there, um, I gather it's their events are disrupted as well. So you're mainly focused on the operational side? That's That's correct. OK. Um, if, if council didn't approve this, what what would be the avenues for uh, further discussion, like through audit finance, through mid year, that sort of thing? That that's when it would be. The only, I guess, challenge that I would say would happen with that councillor is that most of these, you know, it's Nova Scotia. Most events that tend to happen tend to happen in the summer. So if if that money, if council wants to put money towards these regional special events, this would be the time to try and do it because if we wait and come back kind of mid-year with through, we could still do that, but we'd be looking at the fall events or the Christmas events. If you were looking to try and give more support to communities for summer events, it this is the time to do it because if we if we wait, then you know the, the window is is getting very close, you know, soon to close. So that's the only challenge um, with with your statement there. So how do we quantify here and now whether or not we have a need? <clears throat> That's the crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> so basically it's we're we're being it's kind of a total a, a total guess. I wouldn't say it's a total guess. Like I say, we've been talking with a lot of groups. We know right now about half of them are not going to proceed with their community events. About half are, and they're re um, evaluating what that event looks like. Um, some of them are looking at having some increased costs, some some are less cost. So the that was our part of our rationale for cutting this amount of money in half is that we were we were hearing that about half were 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 not going to proceed. If if council wants to um, you know provide additional funding to maybe incent communities to to relook at their events, then that would be what this money would would likely lead to. Well, I, I understand your logic based on uh, if half are cancelled um, and the other half are looking at either low cost and some of them are increasing costs. I can see why that line has been reduced. Um, I see I've sparked some other speakers. I'll wait to see what it, what the rest of them have to say, but I'm inclined uh, not to support an increase at this time based on what I've heard. Thank you. Councillor Nickel. And uh, it seems that we're all going that same path where I was trying to go at the beginning, self-disclosure, event planning for 20 years, but various sizes. But and I asked this before of you to uh, Denise was, 
there are commitments that are made for funding, like a three-year funding for community events that are not your small community events or not your, your large community events. And that commitment that's there, I and I wanted to ask you, you already put some money aside for those in case they should hold them later in the year. Is So how much is that that you've put aside for those? For so the, this or just events in general. So, so we have put aside about four hundred thousand for all of the HRM civic events. Okay. What is remaining for the regional special events grants, which are the small the community events, is about right. one hundred and fifteen thousand. And you're absolutely right. Council changed its process a few years ago where those events are tend to be in, in three year cycles. But that is contingent on council's budget deliberation and council approving that money. So those those are all of the groups that are now deciding whether they're going to proceed this year or not. So what amount in this 250k is for those community events that could be held? 100,000 based on council Russell's description. And 100,000 and the 125 is is also in there for the top up plan for the arts grants. That is not part of Council Russell's motion at this point in time. So that number, that amount of money is still proposed to be cut unless and Council decides to put a different motion on. Thank you for that clarification. So so a hundred thousand I'm just trying to figure out what the other hundred and fifty thousand. I'm trying to come up with the right amount sure. to actually yes. add to this. Like I'm I'm saying okay to a hundred thousand, but what's the other hundred and fifty for? So as I understand Council Russell's description, that that is to put back in the event pot, so to speak, so that if if there are opportunities for other events that haven't come forward yet, or if HRM can put host, um, you know, enhanced virtual events, that's to give more flexibility for those events, or if another group comes forward with a proposal. So the that, 150, that 150 would be just to basically add to the 400,000 you've already put aside. Correct, if I understand Council Russell's description. Yes. So for any events that could possibly happen whenever restrictions are, are, are lifted would have 650,000, which I I suspect is high. I, 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 can, I agree with the 400,000 that you've already put aside. So I don't know how this you know, goes with the motion, but I'll wait to hear from uh, uh, Councillor Russell, because I think the amount could be lower. Okay, thank you, Councillor Cleary. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so, actually, I'll I'll very I'll speak very briefly and let Councillor Russell come back on. But as the seconder, um, I'd be more than happy if he wanted to amend this to just put the hundred in for regional events. And based on what Denise has been saying and what Jacques said. You know, if 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 these are largely the HRM events, the civic events, we have control over the timeline. We have control over the budget. We have control over those things. If staff feel that we need a little bit more money, they can be very responsive in coming back to us and saying, "Look, you know, we, we're going to do this extra thing. Do you want to take it from this reserve?" And I think that's probably more appropriate to give the extra hundred now for regional events because uh, those are largely external groups applying for those grants. Um, then we could put that hundred thousand back in. So I'll leave it to Councillor Russell to see if he wants to just bring it back to a hundred, and then if staff feel they need more, they can come back to us at a later time, rather than voting this down at two fifty, because then essentially Council is giving direction to staff to say, no, we, we don't want any more of these events, and that would maybe reduce their enthusiasm and bring any back to us at that point in time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Russell. Thank you very much, and I am uh, comfortable uh, with this being reduced to uh, $100,000 for the regional special events grants. I was simply looking to afford more flexibility uh, within the other events that HRM would be providing. Um, but uh, I will, if, if that is a, a friendly amendment, uh, then I am, uh, again, comfortable with that being 100000 Okay, if it's friendly to you, but friendly to Councillor Cleary, then that's the motion now is $100,000 for the community events. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, can I get clarification from Denise on a point? Okay, I'll come to you after I, let me go to Councillor Stretch and then I'll come to you. Okay. Councillor Stretch. Uh, thank you, Worship, and uh, I had uh, intended to vote no until I just heard the uh, modified motion. Uh, this is an example, and let's not forget how we got here. Okay, we're we're, we're in uh, some pretty desperate times, so we've got to take uh, a desperate action. 
And uh, the motion, uh, as it was presented, was was too all encompassing for me, and uh, and just too uh, uh, ambiguous. Uh, you know, we all have different perspectives, as I mentioned yesterday. So I think uh, narrowing it down uh, as it relates to 100,000 for the uh, uh, specific events is good. But the most revealing point in this whole discussion came from Councillor Smith, who uh, who finally let me know who was behind all these emails. And I'm glad to hear everybody else is getting tons of emails. And I said, where is this coming from? I knew there had to be a pretty big thinker behind that organization. And now I know uh, who to blame, uh, Councillor Mason. But I know his intentions are, are true and, uh, uh, and uh, I appreciate that. But either way, I will support the 100,000. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, okay. Uh, Hensby here. Sorry, Councillor Hensby, yes. Uh, just a quick question for clarification on Denise. Uh, as it stands now, the Sandcastle Day in uh, Clam Harbor in August is still tentatively on. Could you have clarification on that, please? No, Councillor, it, it is tentatively, it, it would not be happening. So we're looking at canceling the Sandcastle Day event altogether this year. Yes. But well, with this funding, if they were able to find another avenue to, to execute it, or would there be an opportunity for that, or just going to let people just go there on their own free will and have their own impromptu Sandcastle Day? Well, I think it, it's it's going to really stem to what the health restrictions are on gatherings, as to whether or not you know people can be gathering on the beach or. What the numbers are so this is as i said we we're not anticipating we didn't hold back any money for any events except for the christmas time events so all of the other events would uh, not be proceeding as normal well since beaches are open now we have no control of the crowd on a beach just to hopefully they social distance themselves right correct well it's I hate to see an annual event like this. But it would have been, I think it would have, this might have been the 50th year. I was getting pretty close to 50 years for the, the Stan Castle Day. And I uh, hate to be at loss, but perhaps it can be done in another form or fashion. If the municipality ain't going to do it, I'm sure the community will traditionally used to do it anyway, but it just becomes so immense that it might be just a, a voluntary thing by citizens. But uh, we'll, we'll have to see. But. I'm sure I'll be back to you about that when we find some more parameters on civic events and gatherings as the province opens up in early June. Absolutely, Council. Yeah, so I guess just Mr. Mayor, just to, to clarify on that, you know, we, we know citizens love these events, staff love putting on these events, and, and these are hard cuts to make, but in order to make the, the budget, these are some of the events, some of the cuts that we felt needed to happen, both from a public health point of view, but also to ensure that uh, you know HRM's financial situation was was uh, able to be met. Yeah, so I see the biggest issue for the Clam, the Clam Harbor Sandcastle Day would have been the the use of buses for for shuttling and stuff, and that's probably the biggest problem for social distancing. It would be the shuttle, shuttling on buses and stuff, and trying to wipe down and clean every time. It'd be very difficult. You know, it's, it's not considered essential as transit is, but uh, it is helpful. But if I for, foresee that it's going to be a, a busy, busy day in the beach that day, if no shuttle service, that's fine. But um, if we can control it and have some kind of modified event still, it'd be nice. Thank you, Councillor Mason. So just to be clear, the I think it's $430,000 for arts would continue. Uh, that we had last year, that will continue this year. Correct. And we are in dialogue with our community partners and we'll assess needs. And if our capacity changes and their needs are clearly expressed, you can come back to council with that. Just because I've already started getting DMs and texts from people going, what does that mean really? <laughs> so I wanted to be absolutely clear to me. So yes, the 435 that you had allocated in say last year is still there. It's, and if for some reason the, the financial situation changes, you know, council can always ask for a report and staff can always go back to audit and finance with, a, you know, a report outlining what options may be there for additional funding. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification, Councillor Mason and uh, Denise. Cheryl, take us home. Councillor Stretch. For the motion. Councillor Hensby. Affirmative. Councillor Kirsten. 
Councillor Nickel. Yes. Councillor Austin. Opposed. Councillor Mancini. Uh, for the motion. Councillor Mason. For the motion. Councillor Smith. For the motion. Councillor Clary. Yes. Councillor Walker. For. Councillor Adams. For. Councillor Sarowski. Councillor Whitman. No. Councillor Blackburn. Voting yes on the motion. Councillor Russell. For the motion. Councillor Outed. Yes. And Mayor Savage. For the motion, so the motion carries. Thank you. Colleagues, we're going to move to um, the Rural Transit Funding Program. Is there a will of account? Man, what's the, I don't have the uh, sheet in front of me yet. I'm just getting back into my house now from my Grand Desert trip. What is the dollar amount on the budget line there for that? The reduction is four hundred thousand dollars. Okay, that was for the Highway two hundred seven pilot project, I believe it was. Let's find out who's with us. Uh, I'm here, Mr. Mayor, uh, Dave Riggi, Director of Halifax Transit. Hi, Dave. Good morning. Uh, so, Mr. Mayor, through you, there there were three pieces of that reduction. Um, $100,000 of the $400,000 reduction um, was a decrease due to uh, lower estimated kilometers by all the providers across the across the um, across the program, and that was uh, based on information that they had provided to us. Um, and then the remaining $300,000 is specific to that uh, the route that Councillor Hensby, the new proposed route Councillor Hensby had mentioned. Um, $200,000 of it was a grant to purchase a vehicle um, and then another $100,000 was the the operating grant around that and even even pre COVID the the um, we would have been likely in this situation with that Coal Harbor route Councillor Hensby mentioned regardless um, as it is tied to the removal of route 401 from uh, from Seaforth and Grand Desert and with um, with the uh, you know the extra work and analysis Councillor Hensby had asked for around uh, during that route into Mineville uh, and areas that route would have ended up the the, so the changes to that route would have been uh, postponed to next year in any event. But now with the uh, all of the August service changes being moved out, uh, that that goes along with it. With it, Councillor Hensby. So to clarify, the route 401 will not be cut this year. Yeah. And to see forth uh, West Chesham Cook, that will remain uh, on on until we have an alternative or 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 delayed in the uh, implementation plan. I have no problem with putting on hold the three hundred thousand dollars for the proposed two hundred seven uh, transit project. Because I've been talking to Musco Rider, and they believe it's highly unlikely the province would have any of their matching funds because that's where we're hoping to leverage. Uh, so I don't mind letting three hundred thousand of that go. I have been having discussions with Musco Rider saying uh, they're finding out that they're having um, they have had some reduced trips, but there's still more trips going on because of medical appointments that they're trying to keep for some people. But they're also doing a lot more food bank deliveries uh, for, for clients and stuff that than before. So um, I, I'm not sure if the hundred, full hundred thousand dollars required. I, I like just to retain maybe fifty thousand dollars. To assure that our rural transit uh, uh, providers don't lose their shirts during this COVID situation because they're not collecting very many fares and they're providing a service uh, to to the province and through the to the community through the food bank service and they have made some applications to some of the COVID relief from the federal government so they're trying to find other alternatives but I'd like to have a little bit maybe fifty thousand dollars reserved uh, for our rural transit in case. Um, other funding does not materialize. Okay, so make a motion, Councillor Hensby. I'll make a motion that fifty thousand dollars be reserved for rural transit providers. Second, stretch. Okay, so that's on the floor, Councillor um, Stretch. 
Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, uh, so my understanding uh, prior to uh, Councillor Hensby bringing this forward, there was a $400,000 uh, budget reduction. Uh, we're now wanting to entertain 50,000 specifically for uh, uh, the two organizations, Musco Rider and East Hants uh, Rider that provide uh, service from our rural communities uh, through you to Dave. Is that your understanding, Dave? And also Bay Rides is available to that funding too. Okay, so the three then, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so Mr. Mayor, through you, so the way the program works is that it is on a per kilometer basis mm -hmm. and there's a single pool of funds that it comes from. So it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be limited to or assigned to specifically um, any individual provider. It would be additional funds going into that pool. Okay. Well, Your Worship, I, I do have to uh, say that uh, uh, the organizations that, you know, traditionally have provided this service are definitely down uh, as it relates to uh, demand. People are not traveling as much as they were, but uh, those that still need to travel still uh, have to have that service. I also want to tell you how proud I've been to uh, see them uh, step up and make uh, deliveries outside of their normal core mandate uh, relating to uh, uh, seniors, uh, uh, food, groceries, etc. And I think uh, $50,000 uh, in the bigger picture will help them maintain that service. And at the same time, uh, taking the 350 out shows the uh, fiscal uh, uh, restraint that uh, rural transit is also prepared to give up uh, during this time. So I'll support the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor um, Cleary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just. Uh, I'm not sure, based on what I just heard, Councillor Stretch and, and Hensby are quite clear on what, what our transit director can do. So it's, as I understand it, Dave, and please correct me, but you can't just go around giving them extra money and there's a base funding and there's a per, per kilometer fee. If, if they don't drive the kilometers, you're, you're not giving them extra money, correct? Uh, yes, Mr. Dave went dead. Dave. They're also driving kilometers they're not collecting fares for. Hang on a sec. Familiar? Hang on a sec. Dave, Dave, Dave. Your headset's muted, Dave. We're not getting Dave Riggy here. He's, He's not hearing us. They're also, they're also driving kilometers they're not collecting fares for. Okay. We're not getting Dave, Dave Riggy. We're not hearing Dave. I don't know if Dave can see me. Dave, we can't hear you. I was. Everybody is. I think he's having a problem with it. I think it's Mr. beyond. Mayor, I sent him a text to tell him that he was muted. Yeah, I, it may be more than that because usually mute shows up on the screen and I don't see it. Yeah, I think it's his actual headset rather than the computer. So this is where Lisa Blackburn should be on here. She'd be able to kill time while we were waiting. <laughs> Get a little color commentary. This is called, yes, you fill for time. This is Corey, we, you, you do a weather forecast. And <laughs> are we working on Dave Riggs' headset? Okay, we're going to try to get a hold of uh, Okay, Dave that, and perhaps Miss um, uh, Fraser knows uh, the answer, uh, but I'm, I'm there is no mechanism to give additional funding unless we were to change the program because there is a base funding and then there's the per kilometer uh, fee. So if we add the extra 50,000, they would have to drive. I mean, we've estimated that they're going to have a reduced number of, of kilometers that they're uh, uh, giving us. So if, if, if is there any other way they can get additional money outside of that formula? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you to the councillor and subject to, uh, to Dave's uh, confirmation of this. I understand that there's two components of it. One is, as you are correct, it's the, the kilometers that they actually drive. The other is the rate per kilometer. So that rate per kilometer could be increased. Uh, typically, it's based on operational costs. Um, so that may be one uh, avenue. I almost said one vehicle that they could use to, uh, to increase the uh, the uh, sharing. Uh, okay. I have a I have a note from Dave that says that he can't get back in, um, so I can confirm with him my answer and then let uh, let council know if I'm incorrect. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Councillor, uh, I think it's Mace, uh, Councillor Mace, sorry, Councillor Whitman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can you hear me? We got you, yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. I think I had a similar question to what uh, Councillor Cleary was trying to clear up for us. I want to make sure that um, Musco riders, the East Hants, and Bay rides in District 13 aren't negatively impacted by this. And if the uh, if they're driving and they have uh, passengers in their vehicles, then I'm o I'm okay with this. Um, if they're not driving, and I know they are, then they're not going to be negatively impacted by this. So maybe Jane could just confirm that these cuts aren't going to hurt what they are trying to accomplish during this time. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think Dave is back in. So if Dave's on the line, he can answer Councilor Whitman's uh, question. Can Dave, you hear me? Back? I think so. Can you hear me? We got you. Looks like my other headset died. My apologies. But I'm back to the old, uh, the clunky one. Uh, so I didn't hear the question though. I, I just got back in. So Dave, really, really quickly, what are the impacts on the rural transit based on the cuts and uh, you know the fifty thousand dollars that we're talking about right now? So again, the, the way so we we had uh, if we take the three hundred thousand dollars aside uh, that was specific to the uh, the Coal Harbor project in Musco, the other hundred thousand dollar reduction was based on the estimates we got from all the providers in terms of what they thought they'd be able to provide this year. So so that reduction is in line with what they told us they expected to be able to operate. Um, if you put fifty thousand dollars back in, um, basically it, it's a little bit of a um, uh, a little bit of a buffer, um, you know, and speaking as someone in the transportation industry, um, d demand is all over the place. It's down, then it's up. Um, so it would provide a little bit of a safety buffer uh, in terms of budget, but the original number would have allowed them to operate the service they expected to operate at the time. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mason. No, I'm good, Ms. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, so the motion is for fifty thousand. Uh, Councillor Hensby, anything else on that? Well, just to clarify, Dave uh, may not have heard me while he was having technical difficulties. You know, there's also some mileage to do and now they're not collecting fares for us. So they're not going to have a high revenue or the anticipated revenue they forecasted for us. So I just wanted to make sure that we we're aware of that. that some of their trips are down, but other trips are up because of what I said earlier, the food bank deliveries are doing for, for folks, uh, but they're not collecting fares for those types of trips and stuff. So they are doing it's probably as much miles and stuff uh, than they had before during COVID. The only thing is missing is that the, the employment drives and the um, medical appointments that the, the people have been postponed, but everything else seems to be holding its own, but the only problem is they're not collecting revenues for those other drives. They did have a revenue source. so. I was concerned though, they're doing a lot more. They're doing, they're being as busy, but not getting the revenues as they used to. So that's why I think the $50,000 could be a buffer just to protect them from not going under. Thank you. Thank you. Ready for the question, colleagues? Okay. Councillor Stretch. For the motion. Councillor Hensby. Okay. <clears throat> Councillor Kirsten. Councillor Nickel. Yes. Councillor Austin. Yes. Councillor Mancini. For the motion. Councillor Mason. For the motion. Councillor Smith. For the motion. Councillor Cleary. Yes. Councillor Walker. For. Councillor Adams. For. Councillor Whitman. Yes. Councillor Blackburn. Voting yes on the motion. <laughs> Councillor Russell. For the motion. Councillor Outhey. Voting yes. Mayor Savage. Yes. So that motion carries. Thank you. We will move colleagues to shoveling winter seasonal hand shoveling. 
Council, what is your wish? I would like to take this one, sir. It's Lisa. Are you looking for volunteers? I got uh, the deputy just beat you to it, uh, Paul. So yeah. deputy, deputy mayor from the bunker in uh, Beaverbank. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you, Council colleagues. Um, I would like to propose returning the uh, $225,000 for this program back into the budget. Listen, I, I'm speaking as a, a member of the Accessibility Advisory Committee right now, and you know, for me, this uh, this $225,000 this comes down to a safety issue. Uh, the hand shoveling is imperative. To, uh, or for those with mobility issues. This is uh, the work that gets into the, the finer areas of uh, snow removal that bobcats and, uh, and plows just can't get at. And you know, for many people in our community, this work means the difference between being stranded in your home all winter or being able to get out and tend to your, your needs and get to work. So I, I think it's even more important to uh, maintain this funding with the the wider sidewalks that we're seeing downtown, we don't know how long that uh, the, that infrastructure is going to be in place. And if it is in place during the winter months, then this hand shoveling will be uh, even more important than ever. So uh, that's why I uh, I do uh, want to uh, make a motion that uh, the main motion be amended to reinstate $225,000 for the uh, hand shoveling winter seasonal work. Mancini secondary. Councilor Mancini seconded. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deputy. You're good? I'm good. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Councilor Othet. Uh Thank you, Mayor. I, uh, I was one of the ones that wanted this put back on the list uh, for the exact reasons that Lisa has outlined, so I'll be supporting this. And if they can take out a few stumps at the same time, that's be great. <laughs> well. uh, I'm not giving up yet. Three, three times lucky. Three times lucky. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councilor Cleary. Thank you, Your Worship, um, and I'll support this as well. Very briefly, in addition to what uh, Deputy Mayor just said, um, you know, our staff have been unable to um, remove the obligation to press our beg buttons on a lot of our uh, sidewalks. So one of the things that's really important for accessibility is the ability for someone with a walker or in a wheelchair to actually get over to the post to push the button in order to get across the street. And if this handwork isn't done, it, they go, the, the little bobcats and the plows, you know, they'll get a foot, foot and a half away from that. But if you have limited mobility, getting that extra distance so you can push that button is extremely important. So it took several years, and I know Paul Vino's, uh, especially down on Spring Garden Road, was a person really pushing for this. It took several years to get this into the budget in the first place so that we can improve the service uh, around these curb cuts. And if we don't have this, you know, we're going back to a very inaccessible city uh, when we have ice and snow. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stretch. Thank you, Your Worship. And you know, after uh, over 20 years uh, in elected office, I'm not ashamed to say that I continue to learn something every day. And I remember when this issue came forward uh, a few weeks back, I, I kind of said, well, you know, this is something we can easily uh, get rid of. It's not, uh, it's not affecting uh, folks maybe as much as I didn't realize that it is. And I want to echo what the uh, councillor uh, Clary said, and indeed the words of the deputy mayor, that this is vitally important. And Paul Vino pointed this out to me as well, not too long ago. And sometimes we take things for granted as uh, somebody, uh, even though I'm physically challenged in other ways, uh, uh, but somebody who is able to uh, overcome uh, a small snowbank, I didn't realize and I didn't take uh, into perspective and consideration how it affects so many others uh, who are not quite as able uh, in our society. So uh, I will support this motion without hesitation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor um, Mancini. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I too will support this motion. You know, as a municipality, we've done a lot of good work when we, when it comes to making our municipality more accessible. Yet there's still a lot more work to be done. And as Councillor Stretcher said, I mean, we, we, most of us online, you know, take things for granted, and we don't know what it's like to have mobility issues. And uh, I think it's extremely important we, in fact, keep this service going, and that shows that we are a progressive uh, city. Again. 
more work to be done, but uh, cutting this doesn't make sense. So I support the deputy mayor's motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I benefit from this uh, a lot because many parts of my district uh, were very difficult, which are very difficult to navigate, have hand crews. And, you know, that was a concern when we first had the discussion, understanding that many, many of my, I, <laughs> uh, many of many of the crews that service the district are, are hand are hand crews. So my question is, the folks that are currently not working, if we do put this in the budget, can we hire them back? Does this affect the hiring freeze? How does that how does that move forward? Who's that, uh, Brad? Yeah, uh, it's my understanding if the funding is reinstated, uh, we can certainly get, uh, we basically what we do is we do a seasonal recall from our staff and we basically uh, go down the list until we have uh, the, the positions filled. In this case, uh, this funding provides employment for 10 seasonal staff for the winter. Okay, so this is, so if we put money back in the budget, that doesn't affect the fact that we have a hiring freeze, you can still, you can still do that, no problem. Okay, great, support this, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Councillor thank you. Whitman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, two concerns. Uh, first of all, I see in the motion here that it says it's two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars for senior snow program, and I understand this is for sidewalks and um, you know in downtown, not specific to seniors. So I'm concerned that we might have two things mixed up here. Or is this under a senior snow program budget for some reason? No, the, the senior. The senior snow program is specifically for seniors homes private property that's what this i thought is, uh, yeah and this one is for uh, public uh, property right so i see system. here in, i see in the chat here it says blackburn mancini budget committee amend the motion to provide for the reinstatement of two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars for senior snow program that's okay. just a typo that'll be the next yeah, no. cheryl just acknowledge that that's uh that's not quite right she's going to fix that counselor okay thank you for that and secondly i thought that in the um the budget that we're paying for the sidewalk snow clearing that, that that would cover this work that they would do a good enough job that we wouldn't need people to come behind and uh hand shovel behind the sidewalk snow clearing folks right yes as, as previously explained to council uh this is about uh getting into the areas with hand shovels that the machinery can't get to. So this is uh, work that's done by our staff in the areas where primarily our staff deliver the service, not contractors. And uh, basically in the areas of bike lanes, curb cuts and bus stops, uh, you need to get in there uh, to a better level with shovels in order to enable some of the things that were just discussed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I didn't realize that that wasn't, um handled by the same folks that are currently on staff doing that so thank you very much thank you councillor mason so yesterday we talked a little bit about uh a perception of rural urban divide and then today we do this so all i have to say is thank you to my colleagues for bringing this motion forward and for uh, uh sharing the concerns of uh folks around mobility in these uh, critical areas I, I i'm i'm quite touched i don't have anything further to say thank you thank you thank you Let's go to the votes. Councillor Stretch. Councillor Mason makes me feel so warm and fuzzy. I'm definitely voting for this. Thank you. Councillor <laughs> Hensby. Affirmative. Councillor Nickel. Yes. Councillor Austin. In favor. Councillor Mancini. In favor of the motion. Councillor Mason. For the motion. Councillor Smith. For the motion. Councillor Cleary. Yes. Councillor Walker. For. Councillor Adams. For. 
Councillor Whitman. Yes to accessibility, no to the bike lanes. Deputy Mayor Blackburn. What the heck is that? Voting yes on the motion. Councillor Russell. For this motion. Councillor Outhit. For this motion. And Mayor Savage. For the motion, the motion carries. Uh, colleagues, we'll go to the senior snow program. Who wants to lead us on that? Well, Mr. Mayor, make the motion of reinstatement of that six hundred thousand dollars for the senior snow removal program. Second. Mr. Mayor, as, uh, as stated before, this is a critical program we've had for our seniors and our communities, trying to keep them in their homes, and especially now with the COVID situation, we've seen what a social isolation can do. And in the winter time, we hopefully the COVID crisis be over, but. Still, we have social, isola social isolation due to the winter conditions. And this is a great program to make sure that there's a way for our seniors to get in and out of their homes, as well as it's an opportunity for checking on them to make sure they are okay uh, by our service providers. So I was talking to one of them last night and it says, it's not just a snow removal program, it's a bit of a social contact that these seniors have. And I think it's a great uh, service to provide and then we need to keep this going. Please and thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mason, I don't I understand your. Did you want to speak on this, uh, Councillor Mason? No, thank you, sir. No, thank you, Councillor Mancini. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have a couple of questions on the program. Can uh, can we get a breakdown of what that six hundred thousand dollars actually uh, covers in the program? Uh, Councillor Mancini, by, by cover, what do you mean? Um, so what does the $600,000 go to? Is it all is it all pers uh, personnel and how is the program working in the past? We've used the why, it's, and I'll lead to the next question. So how is the money used? I'm trying to understand, is it 100% just for people that show up and, and plow the walkway to the oil tank? Uh, that's, that, that makes sense, Brad? Yes, effectively, yes. Um, basically, the program is administered by the YMCA, at least it had been. And of course, uh, I've been very open. We're in negotiations with them now, uh, subject to the final decision of council as to whether this program is moving forward and at what funding level. Um, and uh, basically, it's a, uh, it's a sign up service where seniors uh, apply to the YMCA. Uh, for the service. The service is primarily uh, access to the front door and to the oil tank, as, as stated, to keep them in their homes. And um, yeah, uh, essentially it's uh, served up to uh, around 500. I, I apologize, some of our numbers were off. We got updated numbers from the YMCA uh, for last year. It was a high 500, so I think 580 uh, seniors were served. Uh, Basically, every single uh, district is represented to some levels, but the numbers vary widely. Uh, and I'll leave it at that if there's any more questions. So again, Brad, to understand, so that six hundred thousand uh, dollars, the Y administrates it. So do they hi they hire people to actually do the work? And do you know how many people are actually doing the work? Uh, I can tell you that uh, fit, there's 15, uh, for last year anyways, there were 15 snow removal companies engaged in this work. I cannot tell you how many each of, uh, how much uh, specific personal employment was provided, but I can tell you there were 15 companies amongst which the work was distributed. And we used, the last year you said it was around, uh, so we use every cent of the money. And right, it, it's uh, the last couple of years we've had this program, uh, and, and the budget's been utilized uh, to its fullest. Uh, yes, the history here has been uh, that was asked last time, and we did a little bit of work. But when we originally started the program, it was at four hundred thousand, and basically over the history of the program, essentially all, in almost every single year, the program has been overprescribed, uh, which means people get waitlisted. We come to council, ask for additional money. Council has always granted it. And so that's how the money has crept up over time to the $600,000 level that it is now. I cannot tell you on the rates going forward whether that'll be enough to address every one's concern. But again, the process stand as normal. If the program becomes oversubscribed, there would be a wait list. We would inform council and seek advice. 
Thank you, Brad. You know, colleagues, uh, in some ways, it's similar to our conversation we just had about the hand shoveling in the downtown for accessibility. Our seniors, uh, and I know of seniors in my district that utilize this. I know that probably Councillor Hensby is, uh, has the most seniors utilizing it. But isolation is a is a big issue. It truly is. And uh, uh, being able to get outside, many seniors uh, are concerned about being outside in the wintertime and uh, will not get uh, a fuel uh, unless the uh, the walkway is cleared. So I, I know we're in tough times. I know six hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money, uh, but you know if you know hopefully we save at least some of this. I'll wait till my colleagues uh, uh, chat on it. I think it's a very important program to save uh, at least that portion of it anyway. So we'll see what my colleagues have. Uh, thank you for Councillor Hensby for putting bringing it forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Thank you, Mayor. So I I support this to an extent. When we first had the discussion at budget and, and Brad might remember, I had a lot of questions really when it came down to the administration and, and how the money is used. Because for me and now, you know, knowing 500, 500 or so seniors um, have access to this, uh, I wonder if if before we put this back in the budget, should we, I don't want to say get more information, but really understand like how, how much is, does it cost per, per household? Um, how how much is the, the, what percentage is the administration fee that comes from the Y? Um, if we were to service um, this, this amount of seniors, do, do we know what it would cost us to, through HRM? You know, I, I I understand how important it is, and I have a few seniors who use it. And, and the last time we spoke, we had a, a a lot of a lot of the folks are within the rural communities, which is understandable. Um, so for me, uh, I don't know if putting the full amount is what we should be doing without really getting more information on just how this money is being used. Uh, I don't know if that means we need to kind of do an audit with the Y to really get an understanding of where the money's going and if it's being used, utilized um, the way that it should be. Uh, so, you know, I do have concerns. And so really my questions are, do we, you know, what are the administration costs? Uh, do we know like a per household um, cost for this with the numbers that you have, Brad, and and any other information that might be useful for us to know would be would be helpful for me as well. Thanks. Okay. Uh, thank you for the question. I'll certainly give you what I can at, uh, at the tip of my fingers. Uh, essentially, it's, it works out um, based on last year to about uh, $865 per property. Okay, And there is an administrative fee. And right now, uh, I understand it to be $15,000. Uh, sorry, 15000 I apologize. 15% uh, uh, to the YMCA. Really quickly, what was it? Eight hundred in what per household? Eight hundred sixty-five dollars per property. Per property, sorry, per property. In in the way that the program works, that's per property for the entirety of the winter, or just per visit? Well, that that's for the entirety of the winter. Okay. All right. So, all right. That. Yeah. And I would uh, also advise um, that. Uh, in the current contract, uh, there is a cap on the administrative fee. Um, okay. It's capped at 60000 So it's a 15% fee in recognition that the YMCA does has to have to retain staff to manage the program. Right, right. right. But it is, we do cap it at 60000 under the current uh, contract, which is, of course, as I've stated, up, up for renewal if we proceed. So, and you might not have an answer for this. So, when when you look at the per property cost, is that is that a a good value for money from from you know your your, un, your understanding of snow removal, or maybe you don't have an answer for that? Uh, that that's a very difficult question to ask, and and, and it, much of it has to deal with a regional distribution. Um, right. These are uh, many of the seniors that uh, subscribe to the program are in very hard to reach areas where service providers are in very short supply. And so in many cases, we're 
it, it's a high premium service that we do provide because of the locations, because of the distances, and because of the isolation. So it's it's very hard to look at it through an urban lens of a, what might be a yearly retainer for a personal snow removal service uh, compared to uh, given the the very high distribution to the rural um, to the rural districts. Okay. Uh, I, I would support maybe not putting the full amount and, and looking at an amended amount, but I'll wait to see what other colleagues have to say. Thanks, Brett. Uh, Councilor Cleary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm happy we're having this discussion and, um, you know, there's a lot of food for thought here. Regardless, and I don't want uh, what you know, Councillor Smith was talking about, and 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 the questions. They're they're legitimate questions. I don't want anyone listening to think that you know this isn't a good thing. Like helping seniors stay in their homes is a great thing, and I don't think we could. I mean, over the last three years, four years, in fact, we've been adding to this uh, every year, and now it's up to six hundred thousand. It was two hundred thousand when I joined council, and there was always. Uh, we're full, we need more money, come back to council, see if we can get some more. Um, the admin fee of 60000 I mean, you know, it's one of those things where perhaps we'd be better off to stand, better off to stand up our own program and we could pay a staff member full-time salary to, to do that. So, you know, may, maybe we, um, I'm, I'm fine with going with the Y this year if they're willing to do it and, and spend the money we've done it. But I think going forward, this is one of those things where maybe we should be looking at this a little more carefully. Maybe we should be thinking about how we do it, whether we do it. Um, and I understand uh, the the rural uh, component to this. I actually, had, you know, Councillor Hensby moved this motion. I think his district, uh, from what I saw on the list last time, had the most number of uh, recipients of the program. And so, you know, given district uh, the, the geography of districts one and two, I can completely understand how you can. You know, spend a lot of money driving around before you actually uh, uh, spend a nickel on snow removal. So I think for this year, I'm fine with going ahead, but I do think uh, in the future, and you know, I'm looking at, well, virtually looking at Brad, um, Mr. Anglish, it might be a good thing to consider a short-term contract with the Y of maybe just the next year so that we can, you know, have some thoughts around maybe we, we do this differently or maybe we do it ourselves. So those are my thoughts, but for this motion, I'm happy to support the 600,000 because it's an important program and it took us a while to get to this place. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Mayor. Was there something there for Brad? Or? No, just, just a comment. I'm, I'm okay. supporting the motion as it is, but I think in the future, I would like us to, to revisit this. Okay. Um, just as we move ahead, I just got word there. No new cases in Nova Scotia today. I think that's the first time since March uh, 14th. That's good news. Um, but I'll get that confirmed when I get Councillor Mancini's update tonight. Uh, I'll know for sure if that's uh, true. Um, Councillor Stretch on this. Uh, thank you, Worship. But that is good news uh, relating to uh, uh, no new cases. Uh, I, I kind of look. I am going to support this today, but I really thank uh, staff for the clarification. So the six hundred thousand dollars we're being asked to consider. If you back the fifteen percent out of that, you're around eighty-eight, eighty-nine thousand. Is that fair to say, Brad? But it is capped at sixty thousand. Uh. I that again, I'm I'm giving you the old code contract, so it yeah. remains to you know. I guess uh, history is the best uh, guide of future negotiations here, but uh, yeah. we are sitting down with the YMCA to go over a new contract. So I yeah. can't say for certain that's where we'll land, but that's that's based on the old contract. Okay, and and, and that's look. I understand that administration and looking after organizational uh, components uh, cost money. I get that. Uh, at the same time, that is uh, a fair amount of money. And I kind of agree with what Councillor Cleary was saying, that maybe we need to have a, a second look, but we really don't have the luxury of time as it relates to this year. Uh, this is important. You know, I had a call uh, last season from an older lady, uh, a senior who was embarrassed to call and ask for this uh, assistance. And I assured her she had nothing to be embarrassed about. At the same time, I've been so encouraged, and I think I made mention of it maybe uh, a little more uh, in a cliche way during our original discussion, that uh, I wish there was an opportunity uh, for some younger 
uh, members of our community, some volunteers maybe to help that wouldn't cost anything. I've been so encouraged over the last couple of weeks what I've seen in various communities, young people who right now have no employment uh, and they're not doing much and they're out helping other people, whether it's picking up trash in the community, whether it's uh, taking uh, some of the senior members uh, uh, to appointments or helping with various chores. I just wish there was a way we could kind of uh, focus that and correlate it and allow the opportunity for those that want to help uh, at no charge to help some of these folks. Uh, but that's that's a dream and uh, and maybe someday we'll get there. But in the meantime, I uh, I think this is a, a worthwhile a project. It is not used in my district as much as it is in Councillor Hensby's. I know in Councillor Walker's it's used a lot, uh, but uh, I don't think it's a, a luxury. I think it is a need and uh, these folks wouldn't be calling if they didn't need that help. So I'll support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Walker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, I guess it's more about the process we're going through here than the, uh, the whole thing. It, it, to me, it's like Groundhog Day all over again. We, we went through this exact same thing with almost the exact same questions two weeks ago and to get it on the list, and now we're going through the exact same thing all over again. And I guess I get a little bit annoyed when and by the way, the creep is starting in to come pretty good and clear here about this royal urban split. And I wish we would stop talking about that. And because I have a lot of residents that use it and I have a lot of residents that don't make the list. And when you're stuck in your home and your oil tank is empty, they will not come until the walkway is shoveled. And I do make more arrangements to get sho walkway shoveled than you can imagine who didn't make the list. So to me, this is a drop in the bucket. It's $600,000 is being used by seniors and you already have to do the income thing to get, to get on the list in the first place. So I'll, I'll be supporting this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Russell. I am sorry it uh, took a couple of minutes to find the right button. Um, I will also be supporting this. This one falls clearly within uh, the realm of health and safety, um, allowing our seniors to get out of their homes, allowing their homes to be kept warm, um, does allow them to stay at home. And so I have absolutely no problem uh, supporting this 600,000. Um, it would be nice to see the program expanded. It would be nice to see uh, the follow up done to make sure that we are getting proper utilization from it. And I'm not implying that that we're not, but it would be nice for uh, our external service providers to be able to provide a report and, and have that audited uh, with with what we're doing. Uh, so I absolutely agree with that. Um, but uh, as far as the motion itself, I have absolutely no problem supporting it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Whitman. Uh, thank you, Mayor Savage. Um, I'll be supporting it as well. I have a concern about the um, the contract with the YMCA, and I thought that last time we chatted about this, it was um, possibly more dire that, that that wasn't going to come together as our provider of this. So I wonder if there's a plan B if uh, if this doesn't come together in time for this season. Uh, plan B would be to uh, seek the uh, go out on a uh, basically a, a request for proposal uh, to seek a alternate administration group um, and go from there. Obviously we would be looking for uh, again one of the benefits of this program is the administration fee also helps the not-for-profit sector, which can't be overlooked in this in this particular case. So we would be trying to find another not-for-profit service provider that can also uh, derive community benefit from that administrative fee, as well as provide the necessary connectivity and service to the seniors. Thank you. Good point, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mancini. Hang on, hang on, it's coming, it's coming. We got you. 
Go ahead. Hey, can you hear me? Yep. Not now. Lost you there. There you go. Sorry about that, Mr. Mayor. The, it, it is slow and reacting now. So, uh, look, I, I, nothing further on it. After uh, Mr. Walker, who is a former teacher, gave us all heck, I'm afraid to say another word. So I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor uh, Hensby. Uh, just, Mr. Mayor, I want to let you and Council know that uh, I do have uh, some uh, feelers out there in the community that the Y could not come forward. Uh, I had another community group that wanted to look at possibly putting a, a proposal forward. Uh, I thought perhaps we may, if we put a request for proposals out, then maybe instead of just having one service provider, it could be perhaps um, two or three that could coordinate the east, west, and central regions of the pro of our municipalities and just one large one. But that's something to consider if we have to go for uh, a request for proposals. But I hopefully uh, believe that the uh, our discussion with the Y will be fruitful this year and let's carry forward. OK, colleagues, um, so the motion is what the motion is, which is the 600. How much is it? Uh, 600,000. Ready for the question on that, colleagues? Question. Councillor Stretch. For the motion. Councillor Hensby. Affirmative. Councillor Nickel. Yes. Councillor Austin. In favor. Councillor Mancini. In favor of the motion. Councillor Mason. For the motion. Councillor Smith. In favor. Councillor Cleary. Yes. Councillor Walker. For. Councillor Adams. For. Councillor Sarowski. Councillor Whitman. Yes. Deputy Mayor Blackburn. Voting yes on the motion. Councillor Russell. Councillor uh, Russell. For the, mo for the motion. Councillor Outit. Yes. And Mayor Savage. Yes. So that motion carries, uh, colleague. We will move to the next item on our list, which is the not hiring three six month positions for Halifax. Mr. Mayor, it's Councillor Cleary. I'd like to move that uh, we uh, amend our budget by reinstating the $137,000 for these three six month positions for Halifax. Second. Okay. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. And so very briefly, uh, and you know, Councillor uh, Walker is correct. We, we actually had discussion on a lot of these items already, so we should probably try to be as brief as possible. But this, we are in a crisis right now with the uh, coronavirus pandemic, which is also inside the crisis and actually being contributed to by the crisis of climate change. And so, um, we, we really do need to continue our work around our climate action plan and developing that Halifax 2050 plan and begin to really start implementing. And, you know, um, for our residents, they may not be aware. We already are implementing a lot of the things when it comes to energy efficiency in our buildings, uh, smarter development uh, to create uh, a more sustainable development. All of those things are happening, but we also need to continue to work on the Halifax 2050 plan. So I hope we reinstate this because this is for the other crisis that we're already in, and that's the climate crisis. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bill. Thank you. Seeing no other comments, ready for the question, colleagues? Councillor Stretch. For the motion. Councillor Hensby. Affirmative. Councillor Nickel. Yes. Councillor Austin. In favor. Councillor Mancini. In favor of the motion. Councillor Mason. In favor. Councillor Smith. Yes. Councillor Cleary. Yes. Councillor Adams. For. Councillor Whitman. Yes. 
Deputy Mayor Blackburn. Voting yes on the motion. Councillor Russell. Against the motion. Councillor Outfit. Yes. Councillor, no, yes. Mayor Savage. For the motion, so that carries with one dissenting vote. Colleagues, uh, the next item uh, was um, to add something to the list, which was uh, eliminating streetscaping costs for one year. Council, what is your wish? Mr. Mayor, it's Councillor Clear. I, I, before I put the motion on the floor, I wonder if I could just ask a clarifying question because I had a discussion with Councillor Mason earlier about this, and I just want staff to comment on the um, the streetscaping. This was, as I recall, uh, allowing us to do the things that might be kind of a once in a, a generation um, construction on a street where you have the uh, uh, development or something happening, and if we don't you know, fix this sidewalk. If we don't expand that, uh, it's never, it's not going to be done for the next 10, 20, 30 years. So if they can confirm that, but also um, is this money essentially earmarked? Is it already spent? I mean, do, essentially what I'm asking, do we have a choice to cut it? Because um, I know the discussion and, and it was Councillor Russell that put this forward and it was great to have the information. I just want to clarify with staff, it, is essentially this money already spent this year? Who want Kelly? Yeah, I can uh, I can cover that. So we did a briefing note on this, um, and we explained that it's it's really kind of like you say opportunity money. Right now, uh, a lot of this money is earmarked for reinstatement in association with the South Park uh, bike lane, also with the uh, development that's occurring on the curve, uh, the old uh, the old Y C building. Uh, so uh, Peter is also on the line. I'll get him to talk about how much has been um, committed so far, but I believe some of it actually has been. So. Peter, if you're there, if you can chime in on the specifics, that'd be helpful. Uh, thank you. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, my name is Peter Duncan, manager of infrastructure planning. So, um, I, and uh, through through you, I wouldn't use the word committed, but I would use the word earmarked. And we've earmarked all the four hundred thousand dollars to be used in conjunction with the South Park bike lane project. So. Yeah, Mr. Duncan, if if we decided to actually cut this 400,000, what would be the impact? Essentially, you know, that is a, a massive part of our uh, infrastructure that's being put in in the downtown. We already have essentially half the South Park bike lane done. If we don't do this stuff in front of the curve in the pavilion, does it get done? This, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, so this money is essentially most of it, if not all of it, is for um, ornamental street lights and sign bases and so on. So some of some of it has is for um, higher standard hard surfacing, but most of it is for the street street lights. Um, so if it doesn't, if we don't spend it now, we have to incur more of a cost to come back and do it at a later at a later date if we wanted to. OK, well, given that I, I won't be moving its removal then. Thank you. There is no motion on the floor at the moment. And not hearing anything, that means that it stays in the budget, correct, uh, Jane? There's, I think there's three people on this list. Yeah, I just want to clarify so, the motion. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if there is no uh, motion put on the floor, the reduction would stay on the list. It's not a reduction, though. No, it wasn't. It was put on as a reduction. This is to, this is to take. This was not money that was proposed as a reduction in the recast. This was, correct. This was something that was added to take money, not to add, but to take away. Correct, Kelly. Yes, it was moved by Council Russell to reduce the four hundred thousand dollars. Right. So if it's the parking lot, though, not to not to do it. Yeah. Yes. Now we're That's what we're doing. Right. Yes. I just want to be clear. This is different than everything else. This wasn't recommended by staff. 
staff didn't recommend that we eliminate this. It was brought forward as a potential, so. Correct. Councillor uh, Mason. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, uh, you know, just so everybody's totally clear what the $400,000 is, to, to, is that it is the money that we were asked to put aside so that streetscaping can happen when we're doing regular paving and recapitalization. So this is the money that lets us meet the capital district standard for downtown Halifax and, and the streetscaping standards for Cottage and Street and for downtown Dartmouth. And while most of it is happening on South Park this year, uh, it is uh, also, you know, little dribs and drabs happen in other projects. You know, my concern if the motion, if this goes ahead and I'm still not clear, like m my impression is that we, you know, like if, if we need to make a motion to take this out, I, I, I would take it out, but I thought we had to put a motion in because we'd asked for it. To, to to put it in uh, when we ask for it for the parking lot. But, you know, my concern is that we are going to finish South Park regardless. That's happening, right? We are going to make South Park happen this year from Sackville to uh, Spring Garden Road. Uh, the reinstatement in front of the curve, uh, the curve and the, uh, the bike lanes are happening. But all the other things that have been an ambition for us, something that we uh, that we have been doing throughout downtown, whenever uh, a private sector development happens and enables this kind of thing, uh, uh, you know, for us to have that money to do it like we did in front of lower, uh, the uh, long lower water street in front of uh, Armour Group, for example, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is the money, this is the money that enables that to happen. And if we, it's not a standalone project, like we'll do the streetscaping next year. It's that it's being paved now and if we don't have this money there, then these other things don't happen or they happen at a, at a significant higher expense because uh, we can't tag into the construction that's happening so i would urge council to to uh and, and again can we get a reading from the lawyer or the clerk like do i need to make a motion right now to remove this or is it that someone needs to make a motion to put it in somebody would need to make a motion to put it in this is this is not part of the recast that was proposed in the main motion and so if if no one moves it the matter dies on the order paper um and so that's it that's that Perfect. All right. Well, I, I would ask uh, Council that we move on to the downtown Dartmouth renewal. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor uh, Adams. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Now, I I heard Mr. Duncan, perhaps he could come back for a minute, uh, that this is, you know, for work that is going to be um, done uh, within, in conjunction with the, the other work uh, and light standards, and other things that are are not necessary uh, for the project, but would be completion and make it look better. So we've heard significantly higher costs if for expense if we delayed this a year. What would be the estimated cost if this was delayed by a year? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I don't have any information. I have to come back to you with that. Um, it would be at a higher cost, the materials obviously would be approximately the same, but the cost to install your mobilization and demobilization costs that you wouldn't have if you do it in conjunction uh, with your overall street vendor, and you, there'd be more disruption, but I don't have a number that I can provide you at this point. Okay, well, maybe, well, Councillor Mason said significantly higher. Maybe he has a, a number, because if, if we can delay this a year, I don't see the harm if it's not going to be a ton of money, but uh, you know, we can go back to some of the comments made yesterday uh, and just change the uh, the title and say, you know, we can't afford this. We want to cut back on this. I uh, just just trying to get a better idea, a better feel for for the amount of money. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Whitman. Uh, thank you, Mayor Savage. Uh, I was originally going to ask a question, but instead I'll put the motion on the floor to save the uh, $400,000 on streetscaping. That's you, you're putting the motion on the floor to yeah. So Could the, Councillor Whitman clarify by save. He means reduce it from the budget. That's right. That's yep. I don't see the motion on the screen here, but I just see from the list. It's a one year reduction of four hundred thousand dollars. So just to make sure we get the word in because it's not. It's not a written statement because this, this would this would be a motion to amend the main mo the main motion with respect to the recast budget uh, 
to provide for an additional reduction in the budget of four hundred thousand dollars through the elimination of streetscape cost costs for one year. OK, I move that. OK, second. Second it. Seconded. Councillor Whitman, anything else? That's it. Councillor Walker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And it did come as a to take out of the budget by Councillor Russell. And I guess my only concern is when I have the Dutch Village Road streetscape becoming very soon, will I have any effect on that? Peter or Kelly? The, uh, the explanation. No, this will will not have an effect on the Dutch Village Road project. What was the answer? This will will not have any impact on the Dutch okay. Village Road project. Because if memory serves me right, the explanation we got this morning wasn't exactly the same as two weeks ago. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Russell. Thank you very much. When I was first looking at this, uh, and I appreciate that this is uh, on the table and, and uh, has seen a bunch of discussion and a bunch of consideration. When I was first looking at this, I saw no details by it, and that's why I brought it forward. Um, the Argyle and Grafton and Spring Garden Road uh, streetscaping, um, absolutely. But the streets, the streetscaping broadly, uh, I wasn't sure about. So I brought it forward. And we were told that it was opportunistic and and I was at that time equating opportunistic with unplanned. Um, and so if this is fitting in a larger plan uh, and and there is going to be some some significant savings in doing it this year instead of holding it off uh, for next year, um, then I'm going to. Uh, then I'm not going to be able to support the motion um, because it even though we are in hard times uh, and, and the first three things that I have said that I will talk about are health and safety, food security and shelter, and this doesn't fit within that, it does fit within the economics. Uh, if, if we are going to see a significant increase, if we have the opportunity to uh, get this work done now, um, then it simply fits better in the timing of it. And so I will not be supporting this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Austin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I, I will uh, not be supporting this motion. Um, part of the weakness that we've had on streetscaping is the lack of a predictable regular program. Um, you, I know the examples of that well in my district on Portland Street, where we did a streetscaping project in 2008, uh, but there was never any, any plan to revisit, and the tiles broke off, the planters, the bricks crumbled into dust, and uh, it really started to wear uh, much before its time because we didn't have a regular program. And if you recall, we did have a staff report earlier. Part of TPW's work is to, in the next while, and our planning department is to stand up a regular streetscaping program, um, which includes maintenance and the lot. And so that's what this is. I mean, this is a regular piece where we take advantage of work that's going on in Integrate. Um, so I think this is uh, this is almost the precursors of the bigger work that we're doing in terms of having an actual proper programming on in this area. And so I think it would be a mistake to cut this back, especially since we already know where this is going to go. Are we really going to build South Park and then delay the work as part of it, um, the integration work? Um, the problem with uh, delay, especially when you have the opportunity to integrate and save money in the here and now, is sometimes the down the road date never ever comes and you never come back to it. Um, we're building this now, we should do it right. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hensby. Mr. Mayor, could I ask a clarification that this was to be cut? What particular streetscape projects or what? Uh, um, which which uh, projects will be impacted this year if this money is not available? Any anyone specific or the just generic catch-all basket? So, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, through the council, it would be the South Park uh, streetscaping that we're talking about. That's the particular project that this is earmarked for. The South Park is that one of all the streets we identify for perhaps widening for these temporary bike lanes and active transportation corridors that we're planning to do now for the COVID. Like I, these two seem to be similar in nature. So this this is in the 
in uh, in parallel with the work that we're doing with putting in the South Park bike lane. Uh, so it's reinstatement as a part of that, as well as tying in with construction project for the curve and the pavilion on the corner of Sackville and South Park. So it's 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 in live with an active construction project. And I'm just trying to picture Sackville and South Park. Um, is there any bearing of lines in this particular area? I'm just trying to recall. There's some other areas we've looked at utility issues, but I'm not sure if this is the corridor or not. I'll get Peter to speak to that. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I actually didn't, didn't hear what the, uh, you know, uh, what the uh, councillor was asking. If Maybe if I could ask if Councillor Hensby could re uh, repeat uh, that. Uh, I was asked what's the scope of the work anticipated for this particular streetscaping at South Park and Sackville. Was it any of it to be undergrounding utilities or whatever type of enhancements uh, are we looking at trying to uh, encourage here? Uh, through you, Ms. Mayor. So for the HRM project, it's essentially the uh, the dual bike lane along uh, South Park Street between uh, between uh, Spring Garden and Sackville. Uh, the developer is undertaking some enhancements themselves, which would involve uh, putting the uh, electrical ladder laterals. So what we would call the secondary services, they would be under the surface. And I believe some, some of the electrical is already below the surface in the area anyways. Well, uh if the work is to continue this year and we're having collaboration with the property you know, the developer then I'm gonna keep it there like i said these opportunities are not very often we're getting work done and uh if we can get done this time of year with the developer let's see it through thank you councillor stretch Can we, uh, Mayor, if I can just clarify, uh, <clears throat> Cheryl, the motion you have there is incorrect. The motion should be, as I said before, that the budget committee uh, move <clears throat> to uh, to further amend the uh, the budget by providing for an additional elimination of four hundred thousand dollars from the budget with respect to the streetscaping projects for one year. It, it's it's not yeah it currently it's not in the budget this is this is a this is a straight up amendment of the of the recast budget okay councillor stretch we'll come back to councillor stretch councillor adams You took me by surprise there, Your Worship. Um, so <clears throat> I understand that this was in, uh, brought in uh, originally. So staff had always recommended this, and then I think uh, Council Russell added it to eliminate it. Okay. Um, but I'm still a little concerned that we've hear, heard um, significant expense if we don't do it now. And not one person on this call can tell me what that means. So maybe we should try a different term. Um, and you know, if you're going to say significant expense, you have to have an answer. Or you have to have some semblance of a of uh, information that will will define that for us. Right now, uh, Mr. Uh, Duncan, who said it will cost more, did not use significant or any other adjective, but he did say it could cost more. But um, you know, I, I think it's in everyone's best interest that we just you know say it could cost more and. Leave uh, leave the adjectives out of it. So um, I'm fine with keeping this in, given it was a, originally a, a staff recommendation. Um, I don't know if it's going to cost us more or not, uh, but uh, given that this was a uh, something that added in and, and contrary to what staff recommended, I'm I'm good with it. Thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> Councillor Stretch. Councillor Stretch on the phone. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Councillor Stretch isn't in the meeting at this moment. We are looking into it. Okay. All right. Well, let's make some calls before we alert the RCMP. Uh, I would. Uh, I, I just want to speak in favor of keeping this in the budget. To me, it makes a lot of sense. This is a huge new development uh, that would be impacted by this. 
Um, it's also probably the best year to do it because it might be less disruptive with less traffic over the next number of uh, months. But I think this is a key area in the city and I think it's something that we need to make sure that we get done um, this year. I don't see anybody else who's going to speak. I'm just going to see Corey, are you talking to Steve? Ask him if he needs to speak to this or if we could go to the vote. Uh, Councillor Whitman. Yeah, going uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. If staff could just be very clear on what is um, at risk of not getting uh, accomplished here by this. Um, I've heard ornamental street lighting. Does that mean that there will be lighting put in? It just won't be the ornamental type? Peter, we can't hear you. Uh, I'm sorry about that, Mr. Mayor. My uh, mute is uh, slow, slow to respond. Um, yeah, it, we, we will be putting street lighting in, but it won't be the ornamental lights. Um, there won't be, and uh, we won't have the ornamental pedestrian lights or poles either. Um, and we'll, and some of the hard surfacing uh, on the sidewalk will not be the brick uh, pavers like between the curb and the edge of the side sidewalk. So that will not happen either. Thank you. Councillor Stretch, are you with us? Yes, I, I'm here. I'm sorry. I lost my internet or something. Can you hear me? Go ahead, sir. Uh, I don't know where you are. Did you uh, vote yet? No, we're, we're holding up for you. Oh, gosh. Well, thank you for that. So the motion, uh, please just repeat the motion uh, for me. The budget committee amend the motion to provide for a further amendment to the budget to provide for the elimination of $400,000 for streetscaping projects for one year in the 2021 budget. Okay, I think uh, uh, I'm back. So I'm going to vote against this. There you are. Yeah. yeah, so uh, I apologize. Uh, uh, you know, there's an old saying, don't cut your nose off to spite your face. And uh, in this case, I think uh, it applies. There is a sound business case for uh, doing this now. Uh, we're, we're, not, we're not hearing you very well, Steve, uh, Councillor. Uh, Okay. We're not getting you very clearly, Councillor, but I think we got your point. We'll go to the vote. We'll yeah. go to the vote, Cheryl. Against the motion. Councillor Hensby. Again. Negatory. Councillor Nickel. No. 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 Councillor Austin. No. Councillor Mancini. Against the motion. Councillor Mason. Against the motion. Councillor Smith. No. Councillor Fleury. No. Councillor Walker. Against. Councillor Adams. Against. Councillor Whitman. Yes. Deputy yes. Mayor Blackburn. Voting no on the motion. Councillor Russell. Against the motion. Councillor Outhead. Voting no. And Mayor Savage. Voting no, so that will be defeated. Colleagues, it's 12, uh, 12 10. I propose that uh, we'll take a lunch break if we're still here at around 5 15 or 5 uh, 30. Uh, other than that, I propose we keep going. Is everybody okay with that?
All right. Agreed. Uh, downtown Dartmouth renewal. Uh, I'm guessing Councillor Austin may want to. Yes, something. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I would like to move the uh, downtown Dartmouth renewal project $2 million uh, to the budget. Second, Mancini. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Mancini. So uh, I know uh, probably we're getting pretty familiar with this one since uh, Councillor Walker's point earlier, it's, there's a bit of a Groundhog Day feel to it uh, where it comes up at, at every budget. Um, this is ma a major strategic project. Um, this is the daylighting the Sawmill River, the bringing the active trail connection from the harbor over to Lake Nook, and taking derelict industrial land in Dartmouth Cove <laughs> and turning that into new development. And it's all wrapped in together. And uh, <clears throat> for us, for it to proceed, we need to acquire some land. And that's what this item is in the municipal budget. Uh, what's at stake if we uh, don't proceed is, uh, as you'll recall, um, when the shovel ready projects went through, Halifax Water still really wants to get get going with their project and they're hoping to get cost sharing for their $14 million piece, which of course comes from taxpayers, ratepayers, right? It's all the same thing. It's the people of this municipality. And they're hoping to uh, get cost sharing from the federal and provincial government on this. Uh, for that to be shovel ready and for us to potentially get that funding, we need to have the land. Otherwise, we risk potentially uh, land deals are a bit of an unknown. We could end up like the situation with Cogswell where we're ready to go, but we don't have everything lined up. Um, from uh, So there's the Halifax water portion, $14 million, the potential to draw money from the federal provincial government to this project. And then the, here's, the, here's the other key thing. There is a de the developer in downtown Dartmouth has been looking to get started with a project there. They own a good chunk of the land. Uh, they need uh, they need us. They need us to complete the planning, which we've now done in the center plan. Uh, and they need us to get on with this project. We need a chunk of their land. We've actually rendered a chunk of their property undevelopable because we put a transportation reserve zone on it because we want that for our road project. So right now we've we've taken a piece of property, uh, indicated our our desire to buy it, blocked other use on it, and uh, the developer he can't use it um, until we buy it. Um, he can't proceed with his project until we get going too, because uh, the whole of Dartmouth Cove has to be elevated. So all when it's all said and done, the project in Dartmouth Cove, uh, his project is uh, his pro forma is they're estimating sixty a sixty five million dollar assessed um, project when it's done. So for the sake of us not spending $2 million, we potentially tell uh, our developer here to hurry up and wait on development in downtown Dartmouth in a place in our planning where we want it to occur that will provide uh, long-term economic benefits to the municipality. And so, I mean, the other chunk of it is the cost our, our chunk is $2 million. The projections um, long term, uh, the projections from our planners, we are hoping to split out some of the eventual infrastructure costs among property developers in Dartmouth Cove. So in the end, we have to do the upfront, but the actual project longer term, the actual building of the bridge, we will hopefully be able to share that cost among the developers in Dartmouth Cove who are going to benefit from this. So. I very much think uh, we can proceed with this, especially where we have a surplus, and this is very much a one-time item. This is not a reoccurring cost in terms of the, you buy the land, you own the land, and then uh, we can look at our project next year. So please, colleagues, I ask that we uh, support adding this to the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Hensby on this one. I'm glad to see another councillor get in the real estate business. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I assume this is for acquisition of strategic properties in the Dartmouth Cove area only, perhaps the Curling Club and some other places like that, I assume, are the ones on targeted. But I was kind of curious, so is that this money going to be put into our real estate budget or, just to, or, or specifically dedicated for downtown project uh, only? I just want to sure in regards to allocation of funds, where does it actually go? And um, and I say the same thing with strategic parkland. Once you buy it, you own it for perpetuity. Here, I think we're just buying property strategically for, for development progression, maybe realignment of a bridge and roadways, any surplus property I assume will be sold off uh, down the road. So can you get clarification from the councillor? Is that uh, buying a land for, for a particular alignment of grids of roads and bridges and stuff? And if, any, if there is any surplus lands left over, 
we'll be uh, selling that off. I think. So why don't we see if staff can speak to that? Uh, and if Councillor Austin wishes to, we can come back as well. Um, who would we have? Uh, I can I can respond to that one, Mr. Mayor, if you'd like. It's uh, Peter again. Hey, Peter. Um, yeah, so uh, firstly, we don't anticipate um, having any surplus property after we uh, purchase it. We would actually be buying the $2 million is to buy the right of way corridor from private property owners. Uh, and our intention would be only to buy what we need to build the to build the road. Um, and it would be primarily for the extension of existing Dundas Street into the Dartmouth Cove area. Um, and our plans would be, if possible, and if funds allowed, to buy a corridor through to Nathan Street, I believe it is. So I assume, uh, just for buying corridor property, I assume that the Ross Road realignment money is already in the budget for acquisition of a corridor? I think that's a different uh, topic. Road, a roadway acquisition is a roadway acquisition. But two different ones. Not casting judgment on it, just uh, opining on the logic. Councillor Whitman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, question regarding having this real estate conversation um, live today on this call rather than in camera. It seems like we're sending out a message that we're excited about this possible purchase, and it's a private property owner. It's not one of our municipal, uh, provincial, federal counterparts, CN Rail. Is there a risk involved with showing our excitement for this property here today? John? Uh, well, <laughs> I suppose, potentially. Yeah, we usually do this in camera, I think. I, you know, look, we're, we are council, council uh, I would say we are talking about the budget as to what is done with that and and the various calls upon those monies is is separate so i don't think anybody that's listening in should take away anything from this other than that um you know what they would already know which is the municipality has financial resources to pursue property acquisitions when the, when the opportunity arises okay I, I hope we get a good deal thank you thank you councillor uh Walker, I think, is next. Yes, it is. Uh, I guess that we need to go back to the original question. Why was it taken out in the first place from staff uh, that was recommended to be removed? And do we actually need it this year? I guess I need to hear that from staff. I can uh, I can start. Uh, oh, Peter's live. Go ahead, Peter. Uh, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I guess the only thing I can add is that it was moved out to create uh, to create capacity in the budget. Councilor Walker. So does it have to be there or does it not in staff's opinion? Just yes or no. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I'm not sure I can give a yes or no answer it depends on the context i mean if we um if you take it in the fullness of the context with halifax water if they intend to go forward with the sawmill creek uh storm sewer project or as they call it phase two of the Sullivan's pond storm sewer um then we would need to pursue this year in order to align with their with their schedule thank you councillor uh, adams Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, I, I, I'm thinking that because it wasn't uh, included in the budget, then it's staff recommendation to not be in the budget. Is that a logical conclusion? In the recast budget, I think that would be fair to say, Kelly. Yeah. Peter? There we go, sorry. Uh, the counselor's correct. Uh, it was all about trying to find some cash flow. So understanding where Halifax Water was with the project, we said you could you could potentially move it out to line up with them. It's really just trying to keep pace with with Halifax Water, but there's always opportunity to acquire land. So if the money is there, it can certainly be used this year. 
Oh, no doubt, but we're $85 million light, so I don't know if the money's there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Austin. You're muted, Sam. Sorry about that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd have a question for Jane Frazier on that. Um, where are we regarding the surplus? Uh, Mr. Mayor, through you to Council, uh, the 1920 surplus is standing at about $32 million. We had, um, through the uh, budget process in February, the ballot list uh, at that time had added back some uh, some projects. We'd also added back some cost sharing um, for operational items. Uh, so we're sitting at about $15.8 million. This okay. was one of the projects that was added back through the through the parking lot process in February as well. Okay, so are, are, is, are those surplus funds, um, do we still have a uh, surplus that we can allocate? Um, I'm kind of jumping ahead to uh, your report that you'll have coming uh, once we finalize what our, our list here. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, through to the councillor. So obviously, you know, once I get a number and understand what the uh, what the gap is, I'll be coming back with funding strategies. The use of the 1920 surplus would be um, one of those areas that um, that I would recommend uh, for use, especially in in this environment, and hope to match the surplus with one time items as much as possible. So, in your opinion, would this count as a one time item? It is a one time item. Thank you very much for that. So colleagues, I mean, with that in mind, we do have the money. This is a strategic project. Um, you know, I hear what Councillor Adams is saying about um, the budget and recommended items, but this is our job as councillors to go through the budget and identify what we would like to fund what we don't. I get that the councillor's indicating uh, not particularly a fan of this one, but uh, if we were just, if our job was just to accept the staff budget, we would have accepted fire cuts, police cuts, and a whole bunch of other things. Um, we're doing our job, and I think this is one that is worthy of further consideration, given the law, the economic development that's behind it, and the potential risk of not having the property when we actually want to proceed with the project. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stretch, on this. Thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to confirm that I'm back here. Uh, you can hear me and see me okay? Mm -hmm. Sorry for going to pieces there a few minutes ago. My internet uh, finally let me down here. Uh, Your, Your Worship, I will be supporting Councillor Adams. And, uh, you know, uh, Dartmouth has seen a great resurgence over the last while. And I think it uh, looks very well on the whole municipality and opportunities to come up uh, uh, as Jane just referenced, uh, you know, one-time opportunities, uh, that's what the uh, uh, the surplus and, and uh, reserves, I think, are for. So uh, things can't stop uh, completely at a standstill, and I'm prepared to take a leap of faith on this one. And uh, if I didn't vote this way, I think I'd be in trouble uh, on other fronts. So uh, yes to Dartmouth. Thank you, Councillor <laughs> Russell. <laughs> Councillor Russell. Thank you. Um, I appreciate uh, I appreciate this. Uh, yesterday we heard from uh, Ms. Fraser that we are 45, 46% to 54%, sorry, it went up to 54% of the uh, property tax received uh, for the commercial side of things. We heard that we are $111 million shy. Um, one of the things that I've uh, said uh, quite often is that I'm not in favor of increasing taxes, of um, borrowing more money, or in this case of spending our reserves. I, I don't think we're at that rainy day yet. Uh, today we have seen our first uh, zero day as far as the virus goes, but I think we have a long future with it ahead of us, and I think we've got a lot of hardship ahead of us, and I don't think we're going to see the property taxes. And, and this one is a little bit larger than I'm prepared to uh, to consider for the economic side of things right now. And I'm sorry, Sam, but I, I'm going to have to let this one. Uh, I'm going to have to let this one go and vote against it. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And uh, I appreciate the that you know that this is an important project, but there the, we we need just take a step back. And I've. I put together just a, a tiny little thing. I was thinking about this a couple of days ago. 
uh, this year we're, we're going to be okay when it comes uh, for the, the tax bills, but next year we're not. On October 18th, there are, there are 10 individuals so far running in District 11. On the 17th of October, we have the election. On the 18th of October, there's going to be one really happy person and nine set. That makes sense. When we start our budget uh, talks in December, there's going to be nine happy people because they didn't get elected and one sad person because they're in this seat having to deal with this. Um, I'm not trying to, to sound overly sensationalized here, but this is not a good situation. We're not feeling the impact yet. We're not even close to feeling the impact of what this virus has done to our businesses downtown. There, uh, we've got the stimulus money, we've got CERB money, we've got all kinds of other things in play. That's going to wear out, that's going to burn out. Our surpluses, which are one-time deals, they're going to be gone. We can't go back to them, or the new council can't go back to them. So then it's a tax increase and it's not going to be pretty. I, I, I can't support this one. This is uh, just a little beyond, and it's not, in my opinion, time sensitive. It will get done, just not this year. Thank you. Councillor Hensby. Well, Mr. Mayor, I just want to say that uh, to clarify uh, what Councillor Austin said, it's not, it's not a one-time expenditure. Acquisition of land is just the beginning. Then there's the design, then there's construction, and then there's the maintenance. So therefore, it's not just a $2 million cost, it's an ongoing cost in the future. So I want to make sure that point is uh, clarified. It's not just a one-time expenditure, it's the beginning, it's just the beginning of a, of a future capital cost to the development site. But what it does do in regards to enhances the rest of the properties in the area, which will enhance the development potential, which will enhance the market potential, will enhance the property assessments, which will recuperate back in, in future taxes. So I think it's a good investment to go forward. And I always believe in strategic property acquisitions when necessary, and this is one of them. Thank you, Councillor Cleary. Thank you. You're on mute, Councillor. On land issues, I don't usually agree with Councillor Hensby, but I, I ditto what he just said. Um, but in terms of, uh, Councillor Adams said, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be even worse next year. So if that's true, and I'm not saying it's not, um, then we shouldn't spend the $2 million next year either. And if it carries over for another year, we shouldn't spend the $2 million three years from now. Uh, so I, I think the idea is um, this is not operational. This is funding and particularly, you know, we're looking at uh, the reserves of the surplus. We, we still need to continue the business of the city. Yes, it's going to be a reduced business of the city, but this is what we do. And developing, especially downtown Dartmouth, downtown Halifax, um, is part of what has helped us in terms of having the economic vibrancy that we've had, which the mayor speaks of regularly. Um, and what I don't want to see is us being um, penny wise and pound foolish. Yes, you can save two million now, but at what expense? And so uh, I'm going to be supporting Councillor Austin's motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Whitman. Uh, thank you, Mayor Savage. Um, I'm really uncomfortable having this real estate conversation in public. Uh, I'm not a big fan of going. Uh, in private, in camera. But when we're talking about a real estate acquisition with um, private landowners, not one of our partners, and we're talking about $2 million here, um, I might be able to support the vision, but I don't support having this conversation in public. Um, I think it'll be okay if uh, if it's not unanimous, it might send a message that uh, that at least one of us was not happy with, uh, with the conversation being public. And I, I probably won't support it. I definitely don't support this real estate conversation for $2 million in public. Thank you. Okay, let's have a vote. So, Councillor Austin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just to uh, Councillor Whitman's point, um, there is more than one parcel of property here with more than one property owner uh, that we're talking about. And of course, um, you know, we all know real estate transactions have to be supportable. They're at market value. Um, we're talking a budget line, uh, not the negotiation piece just yet. Thank you. Okay, let's go to the vote. 
Councillor Stretch. For the motion. Councillor Hensby. Uh, it's for reinstatement of the 400, of the 2 million, is it? I want to make sure I read the motion right. Yes, this is to reinstate the 2 million. Yes, in favor. Affirmative. Councillor Nickel. Yes. Councillor Austin. In favor. Councillor Mancini. I'd love to follow uh, my other fellow, uh, Dartmouth Councillor Stretch, so uh, in favor. <laughs> Councillor Mason. Councillor Smith. Councillor Smith. Yes. Councillor Cleary. Yes. Councillor Walker. Against. Councillor Adams. Against. Councillor Whitman. No. Deputy Mayor Blackburn. Voting yes on the motion. Councillor Russell. Against the motion. Councillor Outhead. Uh, voting yes, but very worried about our budget. Mayor Savage. For the motion. It's 13-4. The motion is carried. Uh, next item on our list, we've done district capital. We move to corporate accommodations. Council, what do you wish on this? Mr. Mayor, it's uh, Councillor Austin. Can I, can I ask a question about it? Sure. Um, for staff, um, you know, and I guess colleagues as well, this, I, I, I'm, I'm really torn on what to do with this one. Um, we have had the report that's come back that I requested, um, and I find there's not a whole, there's not enough detail in it for me to feel confident in making a decision one way or the other. I, I'm leery about taking this out of the budget right now, given what the report says. But I there's no it, it, it the report really doesn't to me anyway. It doesn't do the level of detail I was looking for to take us actually through and. Uh, basically convinced me of the business case that it's thought out because well, the part that I read in there about um, us consolidating in downtown Halifax, um, uh, potentially then trying to lease out space in Alderney and Eric Spicer, uh, that, that causes me some concern because of course downtown Dartmouth and particularly North Woodside from an office point of view, these are not um, high demand office areas. And so if this is really Part of the financial case behind this really rests on um, moving into space that we are going to pay to lease and then leasing out space that we actually own. Um, you know, that to me, that seems fairly risky. And so I, I'm wondering if staff can provide any insight at all as to, you know, what the end state of this is in terms of vacant space um, in Alderney and Eric Spicer because um, I'm, I'm concerned about that risk where we own things that are, we're paying for and we're moving into leases. Okay, we'll go to Jane. Just want to let councilors know there is no motion yet on the floor that has to be made and Councillor Austin is asking clarifying questions right now. Councillor uh, Jane. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to the councillor. So um, a couple of couple of uh, points I'd like to make about about the report is the um, so essentially what we're doing here is we're accelerating some of the uh, scheduled uh, corporate accommodation moves. Uh, so this is bringing planning and development forward by about two years. So what we're doing is we're shifting some. We're recommending a shift in some of the the capital funding. Uh, there is only two million dollars available. Uh, there was 1.6 million dollars of carry forward from uh, 1920 that is already under contract committed and work being done. So the maximum amount uh, is $2 million. So um, just on the uh, on your specific questions, uh, Councillor, there's a couple of things. One is what we're seeing now in the market is um, that uh, the, the leasing costs uh, in downtown Halifax are very, very favorable. Uh, so we're we're leasing out at at very good rates. We expect that those rates are going to continue to to fall. So uh, with that, our savings. So if we have to do a five year renewal, for example, uh, in uh, Duke Tower, 
uh, we're going to end up paying more money. So we're we're losing um, operating costs there. So it's it's really all about opportunity cost in this situation. Your comment about Alderney Gate, that um, that building, the model for that building is a mixture of renting out, so revenue uh, recovery, as well as um, mixture of, of some ownership. So on the third floor, we've had the fire um, fire department. They're moving their uh, headquarters to the property uh, in Bedford on the uh, uh, Hammonds Plains Road, the old Ben's Bakery area. So that's freeing up space. And some of the, the savings from that and the revenue that we can, can generate from there is uh, was part of the business case to do that. Uh, Alderney Gate is quite marketable, um, actually, and we actually do get quite a good um, good uh, return on on that when we, we go out. There is not a lot of, you know, there's there's Queen Square and Belmore uh, across the, the road from our property, but it is it is a marketable piece of property. Um, the other thing that that it does in, in the corporate accommodations, it's really about moving um, and it's all very staggered and, and very sequenced. It's about freeing up space so that we do not have to go out and rent space when we're doing um, renovations. So when the, the need to get swing space is very difficult um, the, and standing up project offices. So that's really what it's about. We are seeing growth um, in departments. Uh, you know, the, the briefing note or the supplementary report spoke to the growth that planning and development is, is seeing in staffing levels and the ability to, to have them together. So it's about the efficiencies of um, being able to deliver the work. Uh, having everyone under under one space, um, and then as well being able to to provide, uh, quite frankly, work workspace um, for our staff and our employees. That um, it certainly isn't uh, luxurious by any stretch of the ima imagination, but it it will be space that is safe, that's functional, um, and really allows people to do the work efficiently. So um, on the on the building case, we speak about the ability to um, also, so we'll have savings in reduced lease costs, savings there, as well as in two years out, uh, potential uh, revenue recovery coming in from Alderney Gate that will actually leave us in a positive position of $1.5 million over 10 years. So what's what's the risk point at Alderney if we don't lease the space? Uh, the risk, so we have a number of properties under lease uh, that continue to, to go through. So it's about, if you look at the schedule on the back, um, and, and the time frame. So then it's it's about as leases come up, do we put people in um, in Alderney and pull them out of other locations? So you know, let's let's in 2024 uh, or 2022, um, Alderney, we're all done. You've consolidated your your the space. Um, you go to the market trying to lease out Alderney. Um, there's no and there's no we don't get any tenants. What does that do to where we're at in terms of what the business case for this is and what our options would be at that point? So the plan for 22, 23, 23, 24 is to keep the second floor of Alderney vacant for swing space for other um, corporate accommodations that we're doing. So it's, it's about having that so we can move people in there, space that we own, uh, get the uh, get the the accommodations done as opposed to having to then uh, go out and rent uh, space to have them accommodate. So for example, when the fourth floor of um, City Hall was renovated, we had to acquire uh, swing space. Often what we have to do is go out and find um, rent space on short term leases, which are not typically favorable. Uh, so this would allow us to um, avoid that cost. What about Eric? Councilor Austin, I'll, have to, I'll have to come back to you, Councillor Austin. Okay. We're over time. Uh, Councillor uh, Councillor Whitman, I think. There's no motion on the floor yet. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I am going to put the motion on the floor um, to reduce corporate accommodations by three million six hundred and twenty-seven thousand dollars. Okay. I'll second that. Second by Paul, Councillor Russell. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Russell. So with everyone on staff working from home and most of us on this call working from home and working harder than ever, I'm bearish on the uh, downtown Halifax, downtown Dartmouth uh, commercial real estate uh, business. And I think that maybe we feel an obligation to be a good tenant and to do business and to fill up some of these spaces um, as a good citizen. But um, I think that we should locate in our own uh, HRM owned facilities, have our staff work in our facilities, don't spend fortunes on uh, renovating the top floor of City Hall and, uh, and other projects, but stay in our own places and not take on more leasing. So I think that uh, anywhere we can save, especially with the writing on the wall during the pandemic, if we can save up to 3.6 on the budget, I'm going to support that. And that's why I put the motion on the floor. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor Mead. Jane, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the only thing I would say in response to that, there is not enough physical space at Alderney Gate to accommodate all HRM staff. So there is not a, enough physical space to accommodate planning and development in one location. So regardless of the decision, we will always have to lease space. And so w where are those folks that there's not enough space for? Where are they working from today? So they're they are in lease space. So for I'll speak to planning and development. They were leasing space at Bears Road, um, and we also have them at Mellor Avenue, and then at Alderney Gate. But today they're all working from home, correct? I I don't know what the uh, what the breakdown is. They have a number of lines of of business. Uh, Ms. Denty could certainly speak to the operations of her business unit. Yes, please. Kelly, are you there? I am here waiting to uh, here we go uh yes most of the staff currently as as most of uh, all of hrm staff are working from home there are some folks who need to be in the field obviously to do their work but we're well uh we're well into the uh the high 90 percent that are working from home right now thank you very much i'll be uh supporting the motion to cut 3.627 million thank you thank you uh councillor um is it uh Mason, Councilor Mason on this? Sure. Hi. Uh, I guess first thing I, I want to comment on just because of what I just heard is uh, uh, humanity has, pay, has faced significant plagues and uh, pandemics uh, since the beginning of recorded time. And cities always come back from that. So I'm quite confident in the next three to five years that we'll see downtown uh, more full of people doing business and recreating than ever. Uh, you know, that doesn't change the fact that I also have concerns about this and I think I can't wait for Sam to, uh, it's interesting seeing Sam who worked in, I think it was corporate real estate for the feds, like being able to bring that expertise to bear here. Uh, they, you know, this wasn't in the pre-recast budget and now it's here is part of why I think a lot of us are kind of questioning it because uh, this might be the best idea in the world, but why is this here now that we're adding $3.6 million in expenses? at this exact time when uh uh you know we're looking to cut all these other things like th th i'm not missing that am i mean this was not something that was in the original budget and now this cost is being brought in and so what's missing for me is the timeliness why is this i mean could be the best idea in the world i still want to see a lot more paper on it uh, uh personally if it was my business to run which it's not it's yours and the cao so but if it was my business to run i'd want to see a justification uh with uh lots of columns and numbers but um uh why is this something that can't wait a year is i guess the question we're asking I mean, it was going to wait a year because it wasn't in the budget that we had almost approved so so that's i think where a lot of us are struggling if if jane and the ceo could comment on that thank you i see that jane first or the ceo so i i can go mr mayor so so the the funding was in the capital budget what we have done is added one million dollars and it was to advance um, the opportunity third floor duke uh in scotia square so that lease expires uh february 21 uh so by having that lease expire we already have uh we went out to the market uh with our fps for legal for gria for ict uh there's some other uh risk and insurance as well as um, some some transit so those we've gone to the market for those 
what this has allowed us to do is, um, with the least expiring, is advance planning and development. Planning and development has actually been waiting since 2015 um, for renovations and accommodations. So, so that's the reason for um, for it. It is an opportunity with that lease um, expiring. If we renew the lease at Duke, it will be at the current terms that we have, um, which will be much higher than what it is that that we're going to um, that we're going to uh, to get if we go out to market. It is simply an opportunity, is is what it is. I don't know if the CAO has more to uh, to add to that. Go ahead, John. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I can only reiterate, I think, what Jane has already said to the extent that you know we're pushing we're pushing back on the corporate accommodations reduction uh, because um, there's 1.6 million in carryover that is currently under contract. So there really, in fact, is only there is only two million dollars available if you wanted to reduce. So all we've done here is accelerate the planning and development move and funding by two years. And if that funding is lost, it'll actually cost us money at the end of the day with higher lease renewal terms and that we can get going to market uh, and it takes space at Alderney Gate that we can lease uh, and uh, at least for revenue out of, uh, at the end of the day. So we would lose that opportunity. So this is a really a business decision that that is an important one that will actually in the in the uh, in the short and medium term, actually save uh, save us money uh, going forward. So certainly uh, would encourage you to um, to uh, not not take this on at this time for the reasons we've already stated. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Jane and Jacques. I think uh, I'm afraid that if we vote this down, it would be penny wise, pound foolish in the long run. And I I think given the complexities, I, I've been here long enough. I've seen these corporate accommodation solutions come forward again and again and again. And uh, to actually have the motion we've been theoretically talking about for five years uh, to, to make those moves, uh, I think would be huge for the organization. So I, I think I'm going to have to uh, not support removing it from the budget. Thank you. Uh, thank you, CEO. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Stretch. Yeah, this is uh, this is a complicated one. And uh, you know, I understand uh, both sides. In a year where we're uh, challenged, uh, $3.5 million is, uh, is a lot of money. And uh, my tendency would be to uh, uh, to let it go. At the same time, when I hear Jane and and Jock uh, speak, uh, uh, the business side of me comes out. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. So really, what I just heard you say, Jock, through you to the mayor, is that uh, uh, your preference, uh, as it relates to good business practices, would be not to support this motion. This motion is to uh, uh, to to cut this. Is that? Am I got this straight? Am I am I on the right side of this uh, discussion? Yes, um, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, through you, uh, we, I would urge you not to vote for the motion. I would urge you to turn to reject the motion because, for the right financial reasons and the right business decision at this point in the piece, right? This is a this is a strategic move, and it's a, it's actually going to save us money in the long haul. Okay, well, that being the case, uh, and being a businessman myself, I am going to. Uh, uh, going to take a leap of faith in favor of the staff, and I will not be supporting the motion, albeit my uh, my instinct as a representative and uh, wanting to save uh, is to support the motion. So uh, I'll be voting against. Councillor Cleary. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, yeah, I find it interesting. So, um, you know, people will be going back to offices. Um, the Council Whitman talked about people working from home. That is temporary. And especially, um, you know, our staff have mentioned uh, on a number of occasions the additional expense and the protocols they're putting in place for cleaning and other things. I mean, we know there's lots of work that you can do from home, but there's also lots of work you can't that has to be done uh, at the office. And uh, in spite of, you know, large organizations letting folks work from home and working from home for long periods of time, um, people will need to go back to offices. And in fact, in some cases, we're probably going to need more space per person in some offices, given the kind of uh, accommodations we're going to have to make. Um, I also find it interesting that the person who, who brought this motion forward uh, has consistently said throughout our meetings that uh, he keeps going with the advice of the CAO. The CAO is giving advice saying we need this and this is an important thing to do. Uh, and this motion is contrary to the CAO's advice. Um, 
based on the discussion on questions from councillors Austin uh, and others, uh, and especially Councillor Mason, um, I'm confident that this is a, a good plan um, and I will not be supporting this motion uh, because I, I think I just have one quick question. It's more confirmatory than anything, but I believe in the, the plan. Uh, planning and development are now being consolidated. Will they not be? As opposed to spread out the way they are now? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, yes, that is the plan to have them all together. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's there, there's synergies in that because when you think about, and I know this from having uh, meetings with our planning staff, and sometimes you do them at City Hall, sometimes at Alderney, uh, you know, you're sometimes, uh, uh, you know, at Bears Road. It, it's difficult to sometimes have discussions with the people you need to have discussions with and all in one place. So I can only imagine the frustration that uh, Ms. Denty feels in trying to get all of her staff together. Uh, so, uh, no, listen, I'm not going to support this motion. I, I think this is an important thing for our staff to do, and now is a good time to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nickel. Well, I guess then uh, Sean says what I was going to say because for 12 years of trying to see East and West planning come together, anything that's going to compromise that, I'm not going to be supporting. So it's it's due time and it's, uh, the planners have had to endure for too long in that regard. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hensby uh, asks, when is the Bayers Road rental over? Maybe if you answer that, uh, Kelly, uh, Councillor Hensby will be okay. Council uh, Kelly? Uh, okay. I'll unmute. I think Jane's probably best to do that. I believe that's up for renewal now, but Jane can confirm that. I'll have to confirm that uh, that number that that date for you councillor i'll be i'll be back to you before we uh we wrap this up at one well, Mr. Mayor, my, my follow-up to that would be then um if we're trying to consolidate our planning office into albany and stuff is a great idea um our our term is coming up at scotia square in february it's kind of curious of how much of an extension of bears road is going to be required for us to do the renovations and required to get uh planning done do we have any anticipated timeline of how long it would take for the renovations to be completed in order to have planning department move? I think Jane's getting the number. I can fill the air for a little bit uh, if you like. I believe um, so the, the, the renovations to put all of us into Duke Tower is, is somewhere in the order of, uh, I think it's an, an eight to 12 month renovation. So the idea is that we would extend the lease uh, in Bayers a little bit to, to spread us over that gap, and then we would move after the fact. That's my understanding generally of it. You're saying consolidation of Duke. I thought we were looking at consolidation to Alderney. No, no, planning and development will be in Duke. And who's taking over the fireplace, uh, fire space in Alderney? Is it going for open market? Uh, again, I believe that's going to be some swing space as we do other moves. Let me know if I've got anything wrong, Jane. You've got it, Kelly. You're fine. Okay. You're, you're doing great. All right, thanks. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Austin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I'm not going to support this motion, um, but I, I'm not exactly thrilled with where we are on this. And I, this, this is where, where it kind of is for me. Um, we have a plan that we're executing um, that, that I've never seen. Um, I gather maybe it came to council in 2015 before my time. Um, that, so I've never seen it. I don't know what the current state is in terms of like what our accommodation needs are and what the future state at the end of this would be. I would feel a lot more confident about it if I could actually see, okay, well, this is how much space we have. This is where we're expecting to be at the end of this. And this is why it makes sense for us to be out in lease space. I, I fully accept that we can, now is a great time to be out there trying to lease space because the office market is favorable to us. Uh, it's a renter's market. But I'd be far more confident in the piece about, well, we are actually going to, in, um, going into more lease space 
and freeing up space that is that we actually own, if I could understand the actual ins and outs, but that level of detail is not in the report and I've never seen it. And the cost of this has gone up by a million dollars this year. So it's a, it's a rather sizable capital piece that I just simply do not understand. And that there's, to me, no insufficient detail provided. Now, the flip side is there's sufficient detail to convince me that this is complicated and there could be some really negative consequences if we just reflexively say, well, we don't need to spend this 3.6 million. Of that, I'm fairly confident on. And so uh, my question to staff is, you know, is it possible to have some sort of, um, you know, more detailed um, outline of what this actually is um, in terms of here's our space, here's where we're going, the ins and the outs, and this is why it makes sense from a business perspective. I don't, I, I don't see that level of detail. Jane? So thank you, Mr. Mayor. So in 2015, um, there was a study done uh, for corporate accommodations to look at the standards that we have for our staff um, and what the size ratios would be. So we have very generous size proportions um, that, you know, it's about 200, it was 280 um, square feet per, per person for an office, which is by any standard um, is, is very high. And I'm not suggesting, you know, workforce uh, 2.0 or 3.0 or any of those standards, that's basic. So work was done um, by staff and it is, um, it falls under the CAO's purview. Uh, to look at um, coming up with standards and, you know, with the goals and objectives of reducing space. So it was about shrinking the footprint and bringing back, um, uh, being able to save money by being able to put more people comfortably in modern good work environments uh, in the same amount of space. Looking at that, uh, you know, spoke a bit about uh, being able to work more collaboratively, the environment that we're in, all those sorts of, of synergies, um, uh, ergonomics, operational efficiencies. If you go and look at some of our spaces, um, you know, there's there's staff that are working in spaces that, um, you know, are they have those really high fabric um, uh, cubicles. They're six feet high. You don't know if someone could be in there and quite frankly have a heart attack and you wouldn't know it. So there are safety concerns around there. So it was really about the modernization of it and being able to shrink the footprint to, to get some stuff back. So there was a stacking model done, which I'm sure you know what that is, but it's it's a sequencing of what the moves are. And in that stacking model, that's where uh, planning and development was, was deemed to go first. So if we could move them, then that frees up space over here. So there are a series of moves. We have not um, advanced as much as we should have on our corporate accommodations because quite frankly every year when it comes capital budget time we go yeah we can push that one that's one that we can push a bit to the right so we have been pushing it quite quite often to be honest the the cost has not increased so much as accelerated so we're bringing a million dollars forward that had been budgeted in the out years in order to to take advantage of this opportunity so that's really what it what it's about okay i mean uh we'll have to leave it at this for now i won't support the motion because i'm afraid of what uh the unintended consequences of just ripping this out would be um but i i i guess i i haven't seen enough to really be sold on what we're doing makes sense particularly where we're going to leave space we own vacant potentially so i'll leave it at that Thank you, Councillor Whitman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, thank you, Councillor Austin. You made some good points there. Um, I, I also don't agree with leaving uh, our owned space vacant. I think that we should be locating in our own spaces and not taking on more uh, more leases. Um, this is an opportunity to reimagine how we do things, and we're going to be doing a lot of things differently after this. Uh, some things we're learning that can be permanent. Um, lots of big, smart, profitable companies are evolving right now and they're making changes. They're going to be working from home permanently. They're going to be getting out of uh, out of real estate. And I'm not surprised that we're not willing to budge on this, but I think that there is an opportunity here to do real estate better, smarter, um, folks working from home, more productivity, working harder than ever, working happier. 
and uh, here's three point six uh, million dollars that we can benefit from. Um, yes, I'm trying to take uh, the CAOs and staff's advice on almost every one of these items, but of course we're going to disagree on some of them. Um, on this one here, I'm just not able to uh, support us being a big tenant and not evolving during this pandemic. One of the big things that can come out of this is we can look at how we do our real estate differently, and today's the day to show that we're willing to do that, and I don't think that's going to happen. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hensley. Uh, thank you again much. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, another question for Kelly. Uh, kind of, I think, kind of think back and said, well, I wish we would have bought the old World Trade Center in the first place. But anyway, uh, that's another, another missed opportunity, in my opinion. Uh, the other question I have, though, is uh, if we're closing our Scotia Square front counter office as being proposed in this budget, we're going to be moving our Bears Road folks to Scotia Square. How will people be paying for their permits or the development costs and application fees and stuff? Are they going to, or are we going to have a separate cashier window for the planning and development office versus what we have there now in Scotia Square? Because right now we'll be closing that office out. So how will people go in? The, if we're going to do all this relocation, are we going to have to have another storefront at some time in the future? That's really a discussion that needs to involve uh, Jerry Blackwood. He and I've chatted about that. And um, yes, I, I think that is a conversation for a future time. Right now, obviously, we're doing online payments. And with our new permitting and licensing system, there'll be online payments. So um, again, as things continue to dwindle with walk-in service, uh, that's the model that we need to look at. So it's it's really a case of reimagining what that storefront looks like and, and an appropriate location. So it could potentially stay at Bears Road, for example, or uh, it might be appropriate to relocate it at Duke. So that's a, that, that's just going to be part and parcel of ongoing discussions about what that Duke move looks like for everybody. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Uh, Jerry Blackwood here, uh, Director of Corporate and Customer Services. And I would uh, concur with uh, Kelly's comments in terms of uh, what would be the best service model to support um, our front counter service as well as um, as well as our uh, planning applications uh, and front counter service in the future. So with with all the corporate accom accommodations moves that are, are taking place, uh, you know, we, we would look at that uh, front counter service as well. Thank you. Thank you. OK, colleagues, are we ready for the question? Sure. Councillor Stretch. Against the motion. Councillor Hensby. Negatory. Councillor Nichol. No. Councillor Austin. Against. Councillor Mantzini. Against the motion. Councillor Mason. Against the motion. Bye. Councillor Smith. Against the motion. Councillor Cleary. No. Councillor Walker. Against. Councillor Adams. Against. Councillor Whitman. 3.6 million yeses. Deputy Mayor Blackburn. Voting no on the motion. Councillor Russell. Against the motion. Councillor Outhead. Against the motion. And Mayor Savage. Against the motion. The motion is defeated. Thank you, Cheryl. We'll so corporate accommodations, Alderney, is that um, the same thing? Uh, Councillor uh, Austin, did you have that on this list originally? I moved this on there originally, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is the, uh, I thought this was part of the previous bundle um, up there in sixth floor. Um, from the report, this is actually um, part of the renovation project down in the lobby area, which is much more public facing. Um, and uh, I guess it involves a washroom. Perhaps we can have some clarity from staff on it. Um, from the report, I'm no longer in favor of removing it. Is that Kelly, uh, or Jane, or Jacques? Jerry. Jerry, how are you, Jerry? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Um, 
Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Austin, uh, his, he, he is correct. It is uh, just part of the ongoing uh, renovations that have been occurring at uh, Alderney over the past few years. And uh, it is uh, <clears throat> it is an additional washroom on the, the main level that will uh, certainly uh, help uh, accommodate the um, the community council uh, meeting room that's there, as well as uh, complement the uh, other bu businesses and the library at Alderney. Thank you. I think uh, it's worth noting as well um, the customer service center, because right now when that library, uh, if the library is closed and anyone waiting on the bus, there is no bathrooms available. Basically, you have to go all the way down the ferry terminal and anyone who's tried to navigate Alderney, it's uh, wayfinding is a challenging one there. Um, Jerry, can you confirm uh, the, the lobby piece that we've deferred for, uh, I think, two years now? I mean, the, it's a carryover budget item. Um, that work is part of this, like this is integrated with that? Uh, yes, Councillor, that, that's correct. Uh, this work is uh, integrated with the, uh, the lobby work. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? On this item, it's, uh, we'll no, no movement on that. We'll go to fire station number two replacement under capital. Mr. Mayor. Councillor Mason. Uh, thank you. I'd like to move that the uh, replacement of fire station two, uh, $1.6 million be deferred to the next fiscal year. Councillor Cleary, second. Seconded by Councillor Cleary. So uh, we don't need to recap this. The chief said that they could do that. And then the uh, uh, union also messaged in that they think that's appropriate if it maintains uh, staffing. And we did maintain staffing. So I feel like this is a good move for one year. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I see no rush to the microphone. So we will go to the vote on this. Thank you, Cheryl. Stretch. Uh, for the motion. Councillor Hensby. Affirmative. Councillor Nickel. Yes to the deferral. Councillor Austin. Uh, yes. Councillor Mancini. For the motion. Councillor Mason. For the motion. Councillor Smith. Yes. Councillor Cleary. Yeah, uh, yes. Councillor Walker. For. Councillor Adams. For. Councillor Whitman. Yes. Councillor Blackburn. Voting yes on the motion. Councillor Russell. Forgive me, I just want to clarify which motion it is. Fire station number two. Uh, yes, for the motion. Councillor Outfit. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear that, Councillor. Voting yes. OK, great, thank you. Mayor Savage. For the motion, I declare that that's carried. Thank you. Uh, NACTO membership, I think Councillor Cleary moved this uh, motion. Councillor Cleary, is that correct? It, it is, uh, Your Worship. Um, so I would like to move that uh, we amend the budget to uh, add back in the NACTO membership, which is 11,000 uh, US dollars, so the $16,300 Canadian which is actually in the report split between uh, P&D uh, and uh, PPW, which I wasn't aware of. I'm glad uh, planning and development was getting some value out of our membership. And um, that actually speaks to the fact that it is an important membership. So we didn't cancel our Transportation Association of Canada membership. We only canceled the NACTO membership. And in fact, I think at our very first meeting when I asked about this, um, Mr. Anguish said it was about $25,000. So it's actually only 16,000. Not that that's a huge deal. Uh, it's still adding extra money back into the budget. But his staff had indicated that, you know, they could still use the resources, which is true, of course, they have all the guidebooks. But 
for this one, it's important for us to be a member because uh, right now NACTA is doing a whole lot of um, uh, sessions with members around COVID recovery. And if we're not a member, we can't access those member only sessions. And so I think um, both symbolically because NACTO is a more progressive set of guides than the uh, TAC is, uh, and also the access to these kind of member only sessions that it would be important for us uh, to reinstate our membership in the, Nor in the uh, National Association of City Transportation Officials. So I, I move that. Seconded. Councillor Russell. No, All right, not. okay. Is there any other discussion on that? Yes, please. Go ahead, Councillor. Cut off clarification. What is NACTO versus uh, CUDA and and uh, ACT? We, we got we got three or four professional memberships in, in, in public transportation associations. So how is each one uniquely uh, different that we need to have separate memberships? To me, there might be some overlap. Just want kind of clarification, please. Is that Brad? Who would like to speak to that? Uh, I can certainly speak to, uh, certainly there is some overlap. Uh, I can't speak to CUDA. I'm not a, a, a professional in that organization. Uh, in terms of uh, NACTO and TAC, uh, I'll just go back to, uh, well, first of all, there's uh, between P&D and ourselves, there's 10 memberships that we let go. Um, and uh, that we propose to cut. And so uh, NACTO is one of them. And it is for us when we were assembling our recommendations, uh, the price of NACTO uh, is significant. And we took a direct service delivery value judgment where it was approaching the cost of one seasonal staff member. So that's how we arrived at that decision. Um, and again, this was only ever intended to be a short term measure to deal with a financial crisis. Just want to clarify that. Uh, in terms of uh, overlap, there certainly is overlap between NACTO and TAC. Um, TAC, the fundamental difference between our membership in TAC, which is about $4,000 Canadian, 4,600 with taxes in. Uh, TAC, we are a, a voting member and actually have influence over the guidelines that Canadian, that Canadian uh, cities uh, in, in, you know, uh, receive from TAC and the guidance that governments uh, produce. And it's tied in closely with government. The difference with NACTO, um, again, another progressive organization, highly involved in transportation. The difference there, we have an affiliate membership, and an affiliate membership means that we do not have direct voting rights in the decisions that are made within the organization and the guidance that's delivered. That said, NACTO does provide value, um, and uh, that you know staff does use it. And so again, this was uh, only suggested as a short-term emergency measure to deal with financial crisis. Thank you. Well, Mr. Mayor and Council, when I'm looking at the NACTO website, and I see there's only five Canadian cities involved, Halifax, Montreal, Toronto, Hamilton, and Vancouver. And also looking on site, on website, I see my access to a lot of the reports and studies and, and, pro, and information. So uh, I think a lot of this is available to us online for some of their studies and, and, and the, the decision making they're making. Um, since we have no direct input or influence on American uh, transportation policy, uh, I, I will not support the, the NACTO membership. I think we should stick to our knitting and stay in the Canadian uh, the Canadian uh, Urban Transit Authority and ACT and all those other Canadian um, organizations that we, we participate in and have legal authority with. Thank you. Councilor Stretch. Thank you, Worship. Uh, did I just hear Councillor Hensby say stick to our knitting? Your, your colors are showing a bit, David. Careful. Uh, look, I agree, though. I don't need, uh, in this case, look, we, we've had a lot of decisions in front of us. This is a small uh, item. It is a small amount of money, but on principle, uh, uh, I'm going to vote against this. Uh, I don't think that uh, our folks up here north of the border uh, uh, this particular year need the advice of uh, anybody in the United States. Thank you. Okay, seeing no other questions, we'll go to the vote. Councillor Stretch. Against the motion. Councillor Hensby. Negatory. Councillor Nickel. Four. 
Councillor Austin. In favor. Councillor Mancini. In favor of the motion. Councillor Mason. For the motion. Councillor Smith. For. Councillor Cleary. Yes. Councillor Walker. For. Councillor Adams. For. Councillor Whitman. No. Councillor Blackburn. Voting yes on the motion. Councillor Russell. For the motion. Councillor Elkit. Yes. Mayor Savage. For the motion. Motion carries. Okay, that's page one of our list. Let's turn to page two, everybody. <laughs> turn, it, turn it over. I think that's all the items, Jane, that we have to deal with today, isn't it? I believe that's all, then, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so there was nothing outstanding, nothing else for us to do today? Nope. No, I will sure. go away. Good. And... Uh, come up with some funding scenarios to be presented uh, at the June 9th uh, meeting. So I think colleagues, that's all for now. And uh, next meeting isn't until June 9th. It's going to be very difficult not to see your faces every day. Um, I'll have to deal with that. Suffer from withdrawal, no doubt. Mr. Um, Mayor. Councillor Nickel. If, if I may, I just, I know it's been a, a hard go and every day seeing you on, on these screens and that, but I just want to, you know, say that it's important that we remain professional doing these meetings. And I've said it before to councillors, some of the commentary, you think you're funny, but you're not. So please remember that. Who, who's she pointing at? She's pointing at you, Mr. Mayor, or me? Who happens to be on my <laughs> screen at the time, so. I think, I think it was you, Councillor Mancini. No, I think that's a good comment. Thank you for that, Councillor Nichols. Anybody else, final word? Uh, yeah, if I may. Um, this has been uh, a challenging exercise, um, and I have on my website that on Friday, May 13th, uh, sorry, Friday, March 13th, this went from the easiest budget that I've ever worked on to the hardest budget that I've ever worked on. And I'm glad we've been able to get through it uh, and end it on a day when we have zero new cases in Nova Scotia. I think that is uh, phenomenal, um, and I think we're in a good place. Hopefully, I'll be mistaken. And hopefully this isn't just a forecast of a further storm, but uh, but I'm I'm optimistic about where we are now. So thank you very much. Just going to ask Jacques as our CAO uh, if you have any last comments. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I want to thank you and and Council and uh, you know Jane and her team and all the directors. Uh, again for the outstanding work. This is a great team that we have here in Halifax and HRM Council, Mirren Council and, uh, and, the, and the staff team. I think we've uh, done a lot of good work in this uh, in this exercise and uh, you know we have a you know we've uh, we all have a role to play and I think we all played it quite well and uh, looking forward to June 9th where Council can make final decision on the on the budget and uh, hope everybody can Take some time this weekend to enjoy great outdoors a little bit and uh, take time for yourselves. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I would also like to uh, say this has been a long and somewhat grueling affair, and um, but I'm proud of the work that the council have done, and I'm proud of the work that the staff have done. Um, and I'm proud that there's been any differences of opinion, which is natural and normal and good, have not resulted by and large in uh, in uh, any unpleasant behavior. So I want to thank you for that. And um, just, just uh, all of you on your screen, let's have a thumbs up for the finance staff and Jane and her team who did a great job uh, working with us. Thank you very much, Jane. Councillor uh, Hensby and then Councillor Stretch. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I have, a quick, I have a quick question for the CAO. Uh, yesterday, the Premier announced a bunch of infrastructure expenditures, like less than $230 million worth of projects across the province. Can we find out if there's a list of what HRM projects are included in that list so we have an idea of if, if we got any assistance in our budget process? Mr. Mayor, through you to the councillor, the, the answer to that would be none. Uh, the, 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 the announcement by the province yesterday was associated with their infrastructure, their buildings, their 
their assets. We're still working uh, with the province. Uh, I'm in the process now of working with Jane and uh, Dave Riggi and, and the rest of the team on, on finalizing the asks further to council council's decision this week on the rapid transit and the uh, Bedford Bedford piece. And uh, we, as you know, we submitted the shovel ready project list. Those negotiations, the negotiations between the province and the federal government are ongoing. And our discussions with the province in that respect are ongoing as well. So, uh, you know, I guess I ask you to ask you to keep uh, keep patient as we work through the piece and uh, hope, hopefully within a short time we'll, we'll get some positive uh, comments back from uh, the province and the federal government in that respect. Thank you, Councillor Stretch. <laughs> Councillor Stretch. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Look, as we wrap up here, uh, it's been a long process and everybody has been uh, giving their thank yous and accolades and I want to echo those uh, uh, to staff, but uh, I think there's somebody that also deserves a big uh, uh, thank you and recognition and uh, Mike, that's you. Uh, as mayor and indeed as our leader, you have uh, uh, risen uh, to the challenge above and beyond. This is not easy and I know it's not easy on you. I know it's a challenge and I just wanted to personally uh, uh, thank you for uh, cheering us uh, through this and for your leadership uh, uh, through this process. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very much. I appreciate that very much, Steve. Colleagues, I can smell my lunch and I get another Zoom at two o'clock. So I'm going to say, take a motion to adjourn from Councillor Russell. And uh, so moved. we'll see you on June the 9th, folks. Stay safe, be strong, stay together. And shop local. And wear sunscreen. <laughs>